What's up guys Chaos Shinobi here. This is what if Naruto has a lost dojutsu. Summary, a dojutsu lost to the past finds its way back to Konoha to the last remaining true Uzumaki. The outcome may change Naruto and Konoha, but at least our blonde won't be alone in the matter. Chapter 1, Konoha Hospital, 5 days after failed Sasuke retrieval mission tilde. Tsunade-sama. Tsunade-sama. A nurse called as she ran towards a busty blonde wearing a green jacket. The blonde turned at the calling of her voice. Yes? She asked, slightly irritated. Honestly, Tsunade had been up for perhaps 28 hours without a single drink of sake. All she wanted was to sit down and relax with a nice, large bottle of sake. Tsunade-sama, the special case in room 212, something's wrong, the nurse said in a nervous tone. Tsunade racked her brain as to who would be in room 212 that the nurse would come to her and not a normal doctor. Every physician in the hospital knew that she didn't take any patient even if they were special cases. In fact, the only ones she was marked as head physician were the members of the Sasuke retrieval squad. Tsunade's eyes widened and she ran past the nurse. She didn't have to shove anyone out of her way, because they practically glued themselves to the wall when they heard the loud clacking of her heels hitting the tiled floor. She dashed down a hallway and made silent prayers to Kami. Please not again. Please Kami, just this once. Don't take him, I can't lose him. He's all I have left, she begged in her mind. Tsunade shoved a moronic and turn out of her way and made a right to the hallway the patient's room was in. She skidded to a stop in front of room 212 and kicked the door open to see a spiky-haired blonde clutching his eyes and screaming in pain. That might have worried her for a moment, but the being before her absolutely made her blood boil. What have you done to him, Uchiha? Tsunade growled to the raven-haired man in the black cloak. He turned to her with his Sharingan eyes and blinked, a single tear of blood rolling down his cheek. I gave him his gift. The traitor Uchiha said icily, I also sent the nurse to gather you in an effort to make sure he stabilizes. What the hell are you even doing here? Tsunade growled again, taking another step forward and glancing around the room for his partner, Kisame. The fish man was nowhere to be found, apparently. He isn't here, Itachi said stoically, not even my master knows I'm here or what I'm doing. This is my last duty as a Nanbu captain to Konoha. I am preserving the village through the suffering of one. Besides, it is only right that I make amends for what my foolish brother did. What are you saying? Tsunade asked, inching her way towards the sobbing blonde that occasionally whimpered in pain. Itachi's eyes flashed back to normal before turning into Sharingan again. There is only one way to defeat the Akatsuki and Orochimaru, Itachi said, I just gave Naruto kun the ability to do so. He now contains something even the Sage of Six Paths feared. And that is? Tsunade asked carefully. She was a step away from Naruto's sobbing form. His vitals were fine, as the monitor said. Something was very wrong with the blonde though, if his sobbing didn't show it, his bleeding eyes did. It has no name that I'm aware of, Itachi said, but it is said to be the most powerful dojutsu in our world. It's rumored to be stronger than the Renningen. Good luck, Tsunade-sama. You're going to need it. With that, Itachi burst into several ravens and flew out the open window just as Shizune and Jiraiya ran into the room. Tsunade ignored them and closed the gap between herself and Naruto. She hugged him tightly while he sobbed. Tsunade felt Naruto hug her back and mumble through his muffled tears. The buxom blonde pulled away and looked down at the young boy. What did you say, Naruto? Naruto looked up at Tsunade with pale purple eyes, tears mixed with blood flowing down his cheeks. Again, I can't, I can't see. Shizune and Jiraiya were surrounding the two blondes as Tsunade tried to console Naruto while he sobbed. She looked up at Jiraiya and Shizune her attention locking on her apprentice after a second. Go research everything you can about the Sage of Six Paths, Tsunade ordered the younger woman. Shizune blinked in confusion. But shouldn't I check Naruto-kun's? The apprentice nurse asked before Tsunade cut her off. I said go, Shizune. The god I'm Hokage barked. The apprentice nodded and bolted out the door towards the library. Jirai looked back at Tsunade. What happened? The white-haired man asked. Naruto's head shot up as he looked in the direction Jiraiya's voice came from. Uro Senen? He asked, his eyes looking just past Jiraiya's left shoulder. Jiraiya's eyes widened and he immediately bit down on his thumb. Performing a few hand seals, Jiraiya didn't skip a beat when Tsunade looked like she was going to shout at him. I need a second opinion, Jiraiya said sternly. Tsunade reluctantly let him perform the summoning technique and the old green toad known as Fukasaku appeared before them all. He hopped onto Jiraiya's shoulder and bopped the sunning on the head with his cane. What did you go and summon me for, you dope? The old frog asked, irritation in his voice. Jiraiya pointed at Naruto's darting eyes. That. The toad sage said simply. 
Fukasaku followed his gaze and his jaw dropped. Fuck me up the arse and call me a salamander, the toad said, those be the Uzu gone. I'd never thought I'd see them again in my lifetime, Bachan? Who is that? What's he talking about? A frantic sounding Naruto asked, his eyes still darting around. Fukasaku jumped onto the blonde's lap and grabbed his face. When Naruto instinctively went to smack the webbed hands away, Fukasaku spoke. Easy there, boyo, the old toad said, let me get a good look at them peepers. Hmm, yes, yes, these be the Uzugan, the swirling eyes from the Uzu no Kuni. And here I thought the Uzumaki clan that carried these eyes died out millennia ago. Naruto blinked, I, I have a clan? I, ya do, boyo. Or rather, ya did, the toad said, releasing his face, the Uzumaki that had the toad clan's summoning contract died out during the Uzu civil war nearly three centuries ago. The reigning in Uzumaki took full claim over the name and banished the toad clan from Uzu no Kuni. We migrated to Hai no Kuni and the rest be history, but here you are, a single pure heir to the Uzumaki name, ain't got the red hair though, looks more like. Jiraiya slapped a hand around the toad's mouth before he could leak out any important information. Naruto seemed confused from the lack of sound coming from the toad. Where'd the old toad go? Uro Senen, did you dismiss him? Naruto asked. The older toad bit the white-haired man's hand causing the man to scream like a girl in pain. The toad sent a glare at Jiraiya. He deserves Taino his heritage. Jiraiya Boyo, Fukasaku said quietly with slight anger in his voice. Naruto's mouth popped open as his slightly enhanced hearing caught what the toad said. Why you know my pop parents? Naruto said. Jiraiya glared at the old toad. He isn't ready, the toad sage said, maybe once he masters this, Uzugan as you call it, but not now, Fukasaku-san. Fei, you just wait until I tell Ma. Your head'll be on a platter faster than you can say dig in. If you'll excuse me, I must tell the prophet about this. Fukasaku said before turning back to Naruto, Nice meeting you boyo, hope to see you at the mountain soon. Good luck with them peepers, you'll need it. Naruto blinked before he heard a puff of smoke and glared in the direction he thought Jiraiya was at. Jiraiya glared back at the boy who was only looking away from his face by a few centimeters. Like I told the old toad, Jiraiya said, You are not ready, Gaki. You have a while to go if your eyes are what I think they are. Now, you wanna know who your parents were, right? Naruto nodded the glare vanishing and being replaced with a small look of hope. Tsunade and Jiraiya felt their throats tighten at the desperation that was behind it. The poor boy looked like he'd do anything, despite his lack of sight, in order to discover who his parents were. I'll tell you, Jiraiya said, if you can master your new Keke Genkai in three years. Three? I can do it in one. Naruto said, determination and confidence in his voice. Tsunade smiled at it and ruffled his hair, earning an annoyed grunt from the blonde. You'll have three to figure everything out about it. Jiraiya said, because in a few months, I'm taking you away for three years. What? Naruto asked. Why? Why can't I train here? Uro Senen. A fist was implanted on the blonde's skull and Jiraiya scowled, show some respect, brat. The reason I'm taking you with me is because I'm going to make you my apprentice. Naruto's jaw went through the bed and onto the floor. Become Jiraiya's apprentice? It'd definitely be the chance of a lifetime, and his hero the Yondame Hokage trained under Jiraiya's guidance him in turn having trained his Lizzie sensei Kakashi. Naruto beamed. I'll do it, Naruto said with a grin. This is going to be awesome. I'll get stronger and I have a Keke Genkai. When I get back, I can definitely get Sasuke team to return. That's another thing, Jiraiya interrupted. You have to give up on getting Sasuke back. He's nothing more than a traitor, you have to accept that he's not going to come back. Naruto's smile faltered and the determined look returned once again. Then I'll take him home. Even if I have to break every bone in his body. It's not that simple, Naruto. Tsunade said, what Sasuke did, it's unforgivable. It's punishable by death. If you bring him here, I'll have no choice but to put him on the chopping block. Naruto frowned and looked down before raising his head, then I'll just have to end it in battle. I think he'd rather go down fighting than being executed, man. How am I going to explain that to Sakura-chan? This isn't important right now, brat, Jiraiya said getting a small glare from the blonde. Look, all I'm saying is, Tsunade-sama, Shizune cried, barging in through the door, we have a survivor from the auto squad that was sent to retrieve Sasuke. She's critical. We need your help. Tsunade stood up and rushed from the door, talking with Shizune over the situation of the patient. Naruto sighed and rubbed his eyes, feeling a warm wet substance on his cheek. He pulled his hand away before rolling the substance between his fingers. He lifted the tip of his finger to his nose and sniffed it before tasting it with the tip of his tongue. His eyes widened in the realization that it was blood. Uro Senen? Naruto said, 
earning the white-haired man's attention. Jiraiya was writing note in his book as seeing his student gave him an idea for a blind boy who would be pitied by many women and would show his gratitude in bed. His perverted grin was unseen by Naruto and thus he ignored the boy before he resumed writing. Naruto's left eye twitched in annoyance, I can hear your giggles, Uro Senin. Stop ignoring me before I maim you. And how are you going to do that? Jiraiya asked with a smirk, you can't even see me, how can you hope to shit? Jiraiya just barely dodged before a kunai embedded itself in the wall behind him. He looked back at the blind blonde and stuttered. Naruto shrugged with a grin. I gotta get used to fighting blind sooner or later. Outcomes in battle are not always a 100% thing, the blonde said, I'll work on my aim first. Now, just keep talking so I can find you. Jiraiya grinned as he realized his student couldn't hit him if he couldn't hear him. He simply put his perverted nature under control before he resumed writing. A tingling in the back of his head alerted him to a flying utensil approaching him at a high speed and he dodged to the right this time. He looked behind him to see a fork embedded in the wall, parallel as to where his heart used to be. Jirai looked back at Naruto with wide eyes. The blonde had a small smile. Chakra enhanced hearing, Naruto said, if I'm correct, the last sentence you were writing was, make the hero blonde or brunette? Or something along those lines. Kid that's deadly, Jirai said with wide eyes before a perverted grin covered his face, do you know how useful that could be for my research? We could find out what women like in bed. The possibilities are endless. A spoon found itself lodged in the wall parallel to where Jiraiya's head used to be before he ducked. The white-haired man grinned, ah, a blush? So my student is one of us. The food tray beside Naruto's bed grazed Jiraiya's ear and he grinned again. That's not a no, Gaki. Uck, what, Kidamaru? A red-haired girl groaned as she blinked and looked up at a fuzzy outline of someone with a pineapple-like hairstyle. Troublesome, a familiar, yet unwanted, voice muttered. The red-headed girl blinked and rubbed her eyes before glaring at the pineapple-haired boy. You son of a bitch, she roared, reaching for the boy's neck. You and your fucking sunai whore broke my flute. I'll fucking kill you, you shit-eating motherfucking bastard. Lie down, Tsunade ordered, forcing the red-headed girl to lie down with a well-placed shove on her shoulder. You've just woken up from a five-day coma and your left leg is broken. The girl growled before looking at the one who spoke and she paled. Why you're, you're Tsunade. Tsunade grinned, I am. I'm also your doctor. Now, lie back down and shut up. Fucking bossy old hag, the girl cursed under her breath, earning a harsh glare from the Hokage, before doing as she was told. Tsunade then turned to Shikamaru, what's her name? Oi. I can answer myself, the girl said before earning a glare from the blonde woman. Rest. Now, Tsunade ordered before looked back at the Nara air expectantly. She said her name was Tuya, Shikamaru said lazily, she's easily high chunin low jonin level and she's a genjutsu specialist her ability to create elaborate strategies is troublesome she had me fooled every now and again with her curse seal activated i'd say she has the skill of a seasoned jonin she lacks in close range combat and her defensive techniques are low in number is she a threat to us now tsunade asked him further irking to you with the fact that she wasn't allowed to answer questions based on herself shikamaru shook his head i don't think so the lazy chunin said if anything She's about as harmless as a butterfly. She may be quite useful if we can manage to turn her to our side, although, you won't catch any of the retrieval squad backing your decision. Myself included. Like hell I will, Tuya shouted, if you think for once that I'm going to betray Orochimaru. Take a look at where you are, girl, Tsunade interrupted her, you're in Konoha with the god I'm Hokage as your physician. Orochimaru left you for dead under a destroyed forest of trees. I'd say your best decision would be to provide information with us and stay alive. We'll even grant you protection from a Konoha shinobi. I know just who to give the job to, too. Tuya was speechless. To be free from Orochimaru's hold, it was a dream come true. Despite popular belief, Orochimaru was not above taking advantage of his subordinates. Taking advantage meaning, dragging them kicking and screaming into his private chambers to indulge in his S&M fantasies. It was a horror Tuya risked every time she failed a mission. She had been close to death after one session and Kabuto had barely been able to stabilize her. But betraying Orochimaru and leaving his village meant death to registered Otogakur Shinobi, which she was, and being one of his personal guards, her death would not be quick or painless. Tuya looked up at the Hokage and put her mask of anger on her face. Fine. I'll be your fucking snitch. But you'd better keep your word about that bodyguard. Next day. And you want me to be a bodyguard? Why? The blinded Naruto asked Tsunade without looking at her. He was currently exploring the use of braille written scrolls, trying to make heads and tails of the language. 
He had dark blue scrubs on and his headband was hanging loosely around his neck. From what Jiraiya said, you're much more skilled at detecting threats than you ever were when you could see, Sunati said, besides, without seeing her, you might be more obligated to guard her. And I need to guard her because? Naruto asked. Tsunade felt a vein throbbing as Naruto replied in a smart-ass manner again. He really became quite bitter since the, hopefully temporary, loss of his sight. I'm not going to lie to you, Tsunade said restraining her anger, she's one of the sound four that assisted Sasuke in his escape. Naruto's teeth clicked in agitation when she mentioned Sasuke's name. He had forgiven Sasuke for the outcome of their battle, but he hadn't forgiven him for betraying the friendship they had. It hurt. It hurt a lot to come to terms with having your best friend being labeled a Nukunin. He understood how Jiraiya felt now, why the old man had such a disappointment when he was informed of the curse mark on Sasuke's neck. Naruto rolled the scroll up before looking at Tsunade, slightly creeping the Hokage out with the accuracy of his gaze, perhaps only being off her eyes by mere millimeters. Who is she? He asked. Tsunade smiled slightly as she realized Naruto was coming to terms with what happened and was moving on. Her name is Tuya. The Hokage said and at his raised eyebrow she elaborated, she was the flute playing redhead. Naruto dipped his head in thought, not bothering to close his eyes before looking back up at Tsunade, I remember her. Shikamaru fought her. Had a hard time if I remember what he said to me a few days ago. She was quite the looker last I saw, you didn't hear me say that. Noted, Tsunade said, agitated that Jiraiya had planted seeds in Naruto's head already. She rubbed her temples and looked at the blonde before finally asking. How are you so good at being blind? You would be too if this was your third time, Naruto muttered, shocking the Hokage. He turned and stood wobbly on the floor before walking to the door and writing himself using the doorknob. The blonde looked back at his grandmother and said, If you want more information on it, ask Dr. Kenishi. He was my doctor Gigi assigned to me when I was seven, he knows all about my past medical records. Please just take me to this girl's room, Bachan. Tsunade made a note of the doctor's name before nodding and walking over to the blonde placing her hand on his shoulder and leading him out of the door and down the hall. Naruto seemed completely calm despite being in utter pain the day before. He seemed to come to terms with being blind, and apparently it wasn't the first time. She led Naruto past the food court and the blonde covered his nose, earning a confused look from the Hokage. I'm enhancing my other senses with chakra, Naruto elaborated, it's really loud and the smell is overbearing. Tsunade knocked on Tuya's hospital door and called into it, you're not indisposed are you? Girl, no you fucking old hag, the girl's voice called back, I can barely fucking walk. How the hell am I supposed to be indisposed if I can't fucking walk to the fucking bathroom to take a fucking shit? Well she seems friendly, Naruto muttered. Tsunade smirked and opened the door, revealing a pissed off looking to ya. She looked at the blonde boy in question as he seemed to be staring at her. What the fuck are you staring at, shithead? She asked with a sneer. Naruto smirked with a prankish twinkle in his eye. Nothing, he said not moving his eyes. Tuya scowled. Bullshit, she said, stop staring at me damn it. I'm not staring at you. You fucking are so. Now knock it off before I chop your balls off and shove them down your throat. I'm not staring. Don't play like you aren't you fucking prick, but I'm not. You say you're not fucking staring one more fucking time and I swear to Kami I'll fucking castrate you. Naruto shrugged, okay. I'm not staring. It's impossible to stare when you can't see. Tuya was about to retort when she heard him say he wasn't staring again when his last sentence ran through her mind. She looked at Tsunade who was trying not to burst out in laughter. What the fuck's the idea? Tuya asked with a glare, giving me a blind bodyguard? You call yourself a cage? Do you know how fucking retarded that sounds? Tsunade looked at Naruto and said, I think you two will get along splendidly. I've got some paperwork to do, so good luck. Don't kill her. Whatever Bachan. Naruto said, walking into the room, just send someone here with a bowl of Ayame Nechan's miso ramen and I'll be fine. If you say so brat, Tsunade said as she walked away. Naruto turned and shut the door before turning in the direction Tuya was said to be. So what now? He asked the red-headed girl. Tuya's eye twitched. She's fucking serious? Oh that's fucking great, Tuya groaned as her head flopped back onto the pillow, a fucking handicapped shithead is going to be my bodyguard. And me. I'm a fucking cripple so if anyone truly wanted to, they could kill me easily. Just fucking great. Naruto's teeth clicked in irritation, you want to see how useful I am? Fine. Give me your fork you aren't using. It's on your left. I know where it, how did you know where it was? Tuya asked with narrowed eyes. Naruto pinched his nose in irritation. I know because I've been in this hospital for a good portion of my life, the blonde grumbled, please just give me the damn fork. 
I'm not in the mood. Tuya smirked at the vulgarity snuck into his sentence and tossed the fork to him. Now what shithead? Gonna throw the fork at the wall? Ooh, careful that you don't throw it out the window. Her mocking laughter was cut off when she heard a twang and saw the fork embedded to the right of her head. She looked back to see that the blonde had a smirk on his face. Tuya narrowed her eyes. So you try and kill me already, eh? She said, well I'm not going down without a fight. Before she could even try to get up, Naruto had a hand on her shoulder. Whoa easy there, killer. I was just trying to prove a point. You don't have to worry about me killing you. Bachan says you're going to give us information on Orochimaru team's village, so I have a reason to keep you alive. And when there isn't a reason, you gonna kill me cause I helped that faggy Uchiha leave? Tuya challenged. The blonde snorted before walking over to a chair, using a wall as a guide, and returned to the redhead side. He sat down on her right and looked at her, unknowingly shocking her with his accuracy. Tuya felt her heartbeat quicken when she looked into the pale purple eyes that had swirling lines in the irises. The redhead swallowed hard under the gaze that seemed to hold back several hidden emotions along with a sincere look hidden behind it. She mentally berated herself for feeling such a way with a boy, who was most likely a few years younger than her, looking at her. Especially after what happened in Tsuchi no Kuni. She was snapped from her thoughts before they could turn dark by the blonde's voice. Bachan said that if you cooperated and proved you would be a loyal asset to the village, she might consider making you an honorary Konoha shinobi. And with our loss of shinobi during the Arosuna invasion. I figure we could use any and all recruits we can find. Tuya pondered this for a moment before asking a question that came to mind, and if I don't pass her retarded shinobi standards? What happens to me then, shithead? The face on the blonde's face was priceless to the redhead when she referred to him as shithead again, you're not even going to ask me for my name are you? You're just going to let me go on and on about Bachan's plans? Bet your damn ass I am. Tuya replied with a grin, I don't give a fuck who you are. I just want to know what the old bitch has in mind. Well since you asked oh so nicely, Naruto said sarcastically, my name is Uzumaki Naruto. Bachan said she'd seal off your chakra coils and make you impossible to become a threat to our village if you didn't pass her requirements. Happy? She can't fucking do that, roared the obviously upset redhead, what gives that bitch the fucking right to? To ya, be quiet, the blonde ordered in a calm voice. She glared at him and was met with an intense glare of his own. How the hell can he even glare back at me if he's blind? Tuya thought. She shut her mouth and bit back several insults as Naruto's blind glare seemed to promise immense unpleasant scenarios if she spoke again. Good, the blonde said, lightening his glare before speaking again. First, don't call Bachan a bitch. Old hag is fine. Second, she's the Hokage, and just because I can disrespect her, does not mean you can. Fuck you, shithead. Tuya growled, I'll do what I damn want whenever the fuck I feel like it, and if I want to call that hag a bitch, I will. You won't, Naruto growled back, the swirls in his eyes spinning slowly as his eyes narrowed, not in this village. Orochimaru probably didn't care what you said about him behind his back, but that's because he doesn't care about any of you and in turn none of you cared for him. You all feared him, with good reason. But if you go around disrespecting the Hokage and Konoha, the villagers and shinobi will not take too kindly to it. And as your bodyguard. I can't let you take that risk. Get me? Tuya clenched her teeth and gritted out. Fine, shithead. Good, Naruto said, his whole demeanor relaxing before he smiled at her. Now if you'll excuse me, I have some well-deserved rest I have to work on. The door is shut and I'll know if it opens. If I don't wake up in 20 minutes or if you need something, wake me up. Whatever shithead, Tuya grumbled as she lied back down and turned away from him. His eyes were definitely something to get used to. Light snores from behind her alerted her that the blonde had fallen asleep. Her curiosity getting the better of her, Tuya rolled over once again to get a good look at her bodyguard. The bandages evident under his scrubs meant he just returned from battle. The small cuts on his arms seemed to be stitching themselves up slowly much to the girl's amazement, and her more girlish side noticed he was well toned. He was muscular, but he had a more wiry build than what she had seen in Otto. Then again, for all she knew, beneath his scrubs he could have hidden a gut. Tuya shook those thoughts and looked back up at the blonde's face. She noticed the way the blonde hair fell in front of his eyes, giving them a slightly shadowed look and making him seem even more mysterious than he already was. Tuya looked down at his cheeks and studied the weird whisker marks that were hard to miss. They seemed to be scars of some kind, or perhaps even a birthmark. The specs on Konoha said there was a clan that used animals in their attacks, so maybe he was from there. Or perhaps they were just acor he used to frighten his opponents in battle. That last suggested thought made Tuya bite back a snicker. For those marks to cause fear within other warriors they'd have to be thicker and he'd have to be less, childlike. The marks did give him a somewhat cute look. Had she been a normal teenage civilian, 
She might have thought he was rather cute. Tu Yi turned bright red before she turned away and resumed facing the wall. Her thoughts were jumbled and she bit her lip in an effort to get them sorted out without gaining a massive headache. Eventually, the light snores emitting from the blonde soothed Tuya enough to relax her and even allow her to fall asleep. The final thoughts in her mind revolving around the blind blonde shinobi called Uzumaki Naruto. Weeks later, you can't go in, a blonde teen in scrubs said while standing in front of a door with his eyes shut. The boss has a bodyguard mission and Bachan doesn't want anyone to bug them until she finishes her surgeries for the day. Aw oh, come on, a pink haired girl said while standing next to a platinum blonde girl her age, let us pass, Baka. Sanadi sama said you could have visitors. The boss could four days ago when his assignment was in surgery. The clone corrected, keeping his eyes shut and his tone being slightly annoyed. Now please leave, Sakura-chan, Eno. Boss is sleeping. The hell with this, the pink hat muttered before smashing her fist into the clone's face, dispelling it with a poof of smoke. The platinum blonde, Eno, looked at her friend with a grin. Just had to go and use that freakish strength of yours, a eh, forehead? She asked. Sakura huffed. Well if he'd just let us pass, Sakura said as she opened the door and walked in. She jumped back in fear when three kunai lodged themselves on her left. The pink-haired girl looked at the standing blonde, his eyes being hidden by his hair and his hands holding several kunai. Naruto. Sakura growled, stepping forward to give her teammate a bash in the head. What are you do ah? Uh? She couldn't finish as three kunai embedded themselves a couple of inches from her feet. Ino stepped forward with her hands raised. Whoa, Naruto Baka. The blonde said, calm down. Forehead isn't here to fight with you over not bringing Sasuke-kun back. A growl emitted from the golden-haired blonde and he lifted his head slightly as he sniffed the air. He slipped his drawn kunai back into his pouch before returning to his spot in the chair and forming the tiger seal. Shadow clone jutsu, Naruto said quietly, forming three clones, all of their eyes shutting immediately and getting into a defensive stance. The original focused his gaze toward the stirring redhead in the bed. Shithead. The girl muttered sleepily as she started to rise, what the fuck was that? Nothing to ya, the blonde said, exhaustion slightly evident in his voice, just rest. You've got a surgery tomorrow. F you on fuck you, shithead. The redhead yawned as her tense form seemed to relax under Naruto's gaze. A few seconds later, her breathing steadied and Naruto turned to look at Ino and Sakura. Get out, he grunted, before I force you out. Sakura and Ino felt their jaws drop. Naruto. The nicest guy in the world despite being a fashion-less loser, was threatening them. Sakura growled in fury before she was face to face with a clone, whose eyes were shut. She gasped at the dark lines beneath the blonde's shut eyes and looked back at the sitting original. Naruto, are you okay? She asked. The clone grabbed her arm and pulled her towards the door. Just leave Sakura, the clone growled. We aren't in the mood to talk about the mission for the traitor. The clone was suddenly dispersed before Sakura could register its words. Another clone grabbed both her arms and forced her out, with another clone forcing Ino out as well. The two clones then shut the door on the confused girl's faces before locking it and dispelling themselves. Naruto yawned and rubbed his eyes. Uck, two and a half days without sleep is murder, he muttered. He opened his eyes and whistled lowly. He had discovered a way to get his eyesight back, in a way. By increasing his chakra in his ears by three times the normal amount and sending some chakra to his eyes, he could make out the outlines of his surroundings, if there was sound. He only had to whistle once every 20 minutes before the sound dissipated and his newfound sight stopped. He had discovered this through a shouting match between himself and Tuya a few weeks ago, who had been refusing any meals that a nurse brought them. She had thought they were poisoned, but when he tried to eat them, she'd bit his head off with curses and threats. Eventually the blonde had had enough and started shouting back. After a few rounds of insults, Tuya crossed the line, calling him a blind motherless bastard not knowing he actually was one. A flare of his chakra and an obscene run-through of insults emitting from the blonde's mouth later, Naruto had discovered his cure to blindness. He then thanked Tuya, blood tears of joy coming from his eyes as he hugged her, much to her displeasure. After the thanking had finished, Naruto summoned Gamakichi, who had been informed of his blindness through other dodes and expressed his anger towards the two Uchiha who caused his friend slash summoner pain and asked him to retrieve Jiraiya from whatever perverted thing he was doing. Gamakichi gladly accepted and vanished in a poof of smoke. Tuya felt gobsmacked that the blonde that was her bodyguard could summon toads and demanded answers. Flashback. What the fuck was that, shithead? A fucking toad summon? Tuya asked in shock. Naruto groaned. Would it kill you to call me Naruto? The blonde asked. Tuya smirked, which he could hear in her snarky response of, maybe. The blonde picked a breadstick up from the food tray and bit into it. After a few moments of chewing and swallowing he said, well, food's safe. Unless you're asking for a five-star meal, 
This won't kill ya. It's better than whatever I got when I came in here in the past. Tuya narrowed her eyes before hesitantly grabbing the fork and eating the noodles before her. She took a small bite and waited a few moments before starting to eat like her life depended on it. She paused in mid-bite at the sound of a chuckle and looked at the blonde who was looking in her direction. He smirked. You look hungry, Naruto said, earning a blush from the redhead. Tuya swallowed her food before muttering, SH shut up, shithead. And answer my question, damn it, okay, okay, relax, Tuya, the blonde replied. He sat in his chair and took another bite of his breadstick. Unbeknownst to him, Tuya looked at him expectantly as she took bites of her food. It was a toad summon, Naruto said after swallowing his bite, his name's Gamakichi and he's probably now the closest thing I have to a best friend. Seriously? Tuya asked with a smirk around a mouthful of food before swallowing, that's fucking sad, shithead. Shut up, Naruto shot back with a small smile, believe it or not, my first best friend was the traitor. Tuya choked on her food before pointing at Naruto accusingly, I knew you looked familiar. You were that annoying blonde idiot from that group that came after the fag. Yeah, that was me, Naruto said chuckling, I guess I have mellowed out after losing my eyesight. Maybe my Kekagankai affected me in a way I haven't discovered yet. Kekagankai? Tuya asked, confused. Naruto palmed himself in the face before smiling sheepishly, duh, I forgot to tell you why my eyes are purple with swirls within the irises. Well apparently I belong to an old clan called Uzumaki. I don't know whether I got it from my mother or my father, though. What are you, an orphan or some shit like that? Tuya asked. Naruto's smile faltered slightly. Yeah. Flashback end. Needless to say. Their conversation ended there with Naruto not wanting to discuss anything else on the matter and Tuya not knowing what to say. Just as the blonde was going to resume his light rest, the redhead in bed rolled over to look at him. What's wrong, Tuya? The blonde asked quietly, seeing the slight frown on the girl's face. The redhead chewed on her lip for a minute before looking back at her bodyguard. This, is my last surgery, right? She asked. Naruto nodded. Bachan thinks so, the blinded boy said. The surgery will be the most dangerous one of the past four you've been in, but your survival chances are extremely high, seeing as she's performing it herself. The recovery time will be quick too, so you'll be able to get back on your feet in about four weeks. Damn right. Tuya cheered before her mood turned somber again. Shithead? Naruto arched a brow, yes? Never mind shithead, the redhead said turning away. Naruto heard her heartbeat quicken and he ruffled his brow before smiling as he figured out, at least he thought what she was going to say. Don't worry too ya, Naruto said reaching over and patting her shoulder, I'll still be your friend even after this mission is over. You might be our next genjutsu mistress, ni? The girl smiled slightly before turning it into a smirk, yeah, fuck, are you sure I can't fucking eat? I'm starving. The blonde laughed, not knowing that the girl was smiling at his carefree, yet tired, laugh. The redhead had been studying the blonde for the past few weeks that they were stuck together. He seemed happy. But to one who wore a mask of anger and vulgarity to hide her feelings, Tuya could tell the blonde was hiding more than she was. The fake smiles made her sick, they didn't look natural at all on his face. His eyes, albeit being a different color than when she first saw him, looked normal and happy to those who didn't know better, but Tuya knew better. Behind the purple swirls was a saddened depth that even she herself didn't have. I'll find out why you're worse off than I am, shithead, Tuya thought, and maybe I can do that if I become a. Can't believe I'm even thinking about this. Fucking Kunoichi of this tree fucker filled village. Chapter 2, Second Chance by Shine Down. You're very lucky, Tuya, Tsunade said from her spot next to the redhead's bed. The operation was more than successful and you'll be able to leave the hospital within the week. Perhaps even tomorrow. Final fucking Lee, Tuya cried out in relief. Thought I'd be stuck here eating the shit they call hospital food for the rest of my life. Naruto snickered from his spot on the wall. The blonde had his eyes shut, practicing with his newfound sight. He discovered that he can whistle and direct chakra to only his eyes, allowing him to see without having to use his ears. Plus he seemed to have a better sight range than a Hayuga and even more sensitive ears than any Nuzuka if what Shizune had said while she examined him when Tuya was in the oar. Naruto looked over at the angry-faced redhead and focused on the sounds coming from her. It seems in the time he did get sleep, he subconsciously learned what his Uzugan could do. He knew from testing his wall walking exercise that he had almost complete chakra control. Shizune even called a Hyugen nurse into the room to check his chakra pathways. Everyone, himself included, was shocked to learn his chakra seemed to be calm and not raging like a river. Even doing the shadow clone jutsu came easier. Hell, he discovered he could make a clone with a simple thought. When Jirai learned of this, he instructed the boy to make a good dozen of them and then took them away for some special training. 
Naruto knew it would be training with Kyuubi's chakra, but he found it to be pointless. If what the fox said was true, Naruto could very well be the next senin. Flashback. Naruto walked through the less murky hallway of his mind towards the cage that held the Kyuubi. The large beast growled at the blonde before he stepped into the light. Once he did so however, the large demon silenced and even backed away from the cage's bars. Those eyes, worse than Madara's, stop looking at me with them. The fox growled before Naruto narrowed his eyes and the swirl spun, causing the fox to become silent. What do you know about my eyes, QB Baka? Naruto asked the demon, taking advantage of its fear and insulting it. The fox released a small whimper before shrinking slightly, becoming the size of a full-grown Inuzuka dog. I, have only seen those eyes once, before my master, the Sage of Six Paths, released me to the world, QB admitted, its booming voice having quieted to one of respect, or even fear. The sage backed away from the bearer of the eyes. I'll never forget the beating all nine of us took before we were dispersed by the sage, he then foolishly tried to conquer this new foe, only to fall in battle. The foe took him as her bitch. Whoa, 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 Naruto said, holding his hands up, back up. My eyes come from a kunoichi that beat the sage of six paths? You're sure it was a girl? Cause I met this guy once and he looked a lot like a girl. QB snorted, do you seriously doubt me, the QB no kitsune? Foolish boy, despite being a demon, I know which sex is strongest. The male have huge egos and thus are often more portrayed as the stronger sex, but the female is obviously the one in more power. Naruto blinked before smirking, so which are you? I am both, and yet I am neither, the Kyuubi replied, as a being of pure yokoi, I can choose. For a bearer of those eyes, I'm surprised you didn't figure that out sooner. But seeing as you have those eyes, I will now submit my chakra to you whenever necessary albeit reluctantly. I've seen the power those eyes are capable of, they could destroy a bijou if fully unleashed. Naruto's jaw popped open, hey, are you serious? What do you think happened to the Juubei? QB snorted, it's true that the sage became the first Jinchuriki, but they never said who proceeded with the sealing. I thought the sage did it himself, oh no way, they lied about that too? Naruto shouted in disbelief. QB merely smirked at him as a response. Naruto held his head before looking back at the fox. I just thought of something, why can I see you? Aren't I blind? The blonde asked. Kyuubi grumbled in annoyance. Technically, yes, Kyuubi said, but the human mind is ten times stronger than the body itself, an amazing thing if you ask me, and thus in here, your mind, you have all senses. It is your mind after all. That makes sense. Naruto mused. The fox rolled its eyes. As it lied down, it glared back at him. I will only be submissive for so long, I will find a way to be free, boy, QB warned before a smirk adorned its face, unless you wish to make a deal? Naruto narrowed his eyes, goodbye QB, flashback end, shithead. Tuya's voice rung in his ear. Naruto groaned and covered his ears before glaring at the redhead, his eyes swirling angrily. He used the vibrations to see that the room was empty once again, aside from the two of them. Damn it Tuya, what? He asked rubbing his head. Do you need to make me deaf, too? I considered it, the redhead replied with a smirk, but I, for one, would like to get out of here. What did Bachan say? Tuya huffed, the old hag said I could leave after lunch, but it's 11.30 so I thought. She meant we could leave tomorrow after lunch, Naruto clarified. Earning a scowl, Naruto smirked at her, you know, you'd be a lot more attractive if you smiled for once. What was that? Tuya hissed threateningly. Naruto swallowed and raised his hands in defense. Nothing? Nothing, sorry, the blonde said as he thought, Kyuubi was right, women definitely have the power, I wonder why though. Tuya smirked, damn right. The least you could do is bring me a goddamn wheelchair. I wanna get out and stretch my legs, this fucking bed is driving me insane. Naruto sighed and closed his eyes, creating a shadow clone. He then turned to the clone and said, go to Nechan's office and ask for a wheelchair. And put your headband on your eyes so no one can see them. Right boss. The clone said as it did as it was told before it left out of the room and to its destination. Naruto heard a snort from his charge and turned back to her. What is it now? He asked, slightly irritated. Naruto then blinked. When did he get irritated? Usually he only had two settings for the village, Hyper Naruto, which was a good 23 hours of a day, or Depressed Naruto, which barely made up an hour in his apartment where he was alone. Your clone, Tuya replied, snapping the blonde from his thoughts. You didn't see it but he was wearing a faggy necklace. Naruto arched a brow and pulled the Shodai Hokaye's necklace up from beneath his headband. You mean this? Tuya grinned. So you do wear jewelry? I knew you and the fag had a fling. It was one kiss damn it. Naruto growled, 
a kiss that should have never happened. And it was something Bachan told you while she was drunk and I was getting lunch. You should have never found out about. You say that now, too you teased with an evil grin. Naruto clenched his teeth. He glared at the redhead before going back to the original subject. This is the Shodai Hokaye's necklace. Bachan wore it for a good portion of her life before she gave it to me after I beat her in a bet. Tuya scoffed, oh wow. You beat the legendary sucker in a bet. How fucking shocking. Clenching his teeth harder than he realized was possible, Naruto shot back. I kicked Kabuto's ass with a Rasengan and took the Kusangi through my liver in order to win this bet. Tuya blinked before outright laughing, oh man. That's a good one shithead. Surviving an attack from the molester's personal dildo and ass slave. Naruto growled before dropping the necklace back to its place around his neck and held his left hand out with his palm up. You don't believe me? I'll show you. Before Tuya could reply, Chakra erupted from the blonde and centered in his left palm. Naruto used his right hand to focus the chakra into a sphere shape. Tuya's eyes widened as the sphere settled into something as big as her fist and the blonde ran towards the wall, shoving the sphere into it. Rasengan, Naruto shouted before the attack connected. A loud explosion was heard throughout the village and the attack shook the hospital's foundation. Tuya coughed as she used her hand to clear the smoke from her face. She turned to glare at the blonde and cuss him out but then suddenly froze as her eyes widened once again. The hole in the wall was easily three times the original attack's size and the wall across the next room had a dent within it along with a lot of shrapnel in it. The blonde was currently smirking in her direction and Tuya looked from the hole to the smug blonde and back before she could even reply. So maybe you survived against the molester's ass bitch. The redhead muttered, her eyes still wide before a smirk adorned her face, bet you can't do that shit again, shithead. If he does it again, he's paying for the repairs. An angry voice said from the doorway. Naruto swallowed and Tuya grinned. Hi hag slash bachan, the two replied in sync. They looked at each other, Naruto's eyes being a few inches off Tuya's, before looking back at the angry blonde woman. Brat, I'm giving you three seconds to get the material needed to repair that wall, Tsunade said raising her fist and cracking her knuckles, one, a boom was heard as the blonde vanished, leaving only a smoke outline of where he once was, the fear evident on his face. Tsunade smirked and Tuya outright laughed at his reaction. The two looked at each other before Tsunade activated the silencing seal that was in all hospital rooms. So how are you feeling, Tuya? She asked as she took a seat to the redhead's right, any pains in your legs? Fuck no, thank Kami, the girl in question replied before looking back at the wall. That wasn't even at its strongest was it? Tsunade grinned, so you are a sensory type. You barely felt any chakra from the mass, and believed it to be weak, correct? Tuya nodded before a musing look crossed her face, the molester told me about several techniques like that. He said that they required absolute chakra control in order to use them in their absolute efficiency, whatever the fuck that means. It means that if Naruto had perfect control over his chakra, he would be able to destroy a building with that technique, Tsunade said. The redhead opened her mouth and shut it several times before a word finally came out. Fuck, shithead wasn't lying about taking the molester's dildo through the liver then was he? She asked the medic. Tsunade contorted her face into a scowl. He did, I still owe Orochi team for that, the blonde growled before calming herself. I take it you saw Oji-san's necklace and he told you how he acquired it then? Tuya nodded again. Yeah, damn, what can't shithead do? Aside from C. But then again he found a way around that. Tsunade arched a delicate brow before asking, he did? How? Some type of echolo something or some shit like that, the redhead replied with a shrug. Tsunade rubbed her head. Well I'm just glad he's managed to get you to cut down on swearing, Tsunade muttered earning a smirk from Tuya. Shithead's gotten through to me slightly, but I've done the same to him, Tuya said with a grin. Tsunade paled. You didn't. The Hokage said, fearing the response. Oh I did. The redhead said with an accomplished grin, that fucker knows some things that would make me blush. And that's fucking saying something. Tsunade put her head in her hand and moaned, oh god, now I have to worry about Jiraiya getting through to him. If you can, there's no stopping that pervert. Tuya laughed at the Hokage's distressed form. The redhead hadn't felt so accomplished in such a long time, but then a thought revolving around her temporary bodyguard came to her mind. Her laughter stopped suddenly and she turned back to the muttering blonde woman. Oi, hag? She said, getting Tsunade's attention, why does shithead wear a mask? He's still upset that the fag left him at the altar? Tsunade hid her surprise well, considering she's, been around for a while, it wasn't that hard to do it. She examined the redhead before her and saw she wasn't prying, but was genuinely curious about the boy she saw as a brother slash son. It's something he has to discuss with you, Tsunade answered after a minute. Tuya growled in frustration but accepted her response. But does it involve the fag? 
the redhead asked. Tsunade laughed, not entirely, the Hokage replied, but, the sad truth is Sasuke was Naruto's best friend. Perhaps his only true friend. Tuya arched a brow, no shit, yup, damn, what a bitch, Tuya said, shithead has to get over it though. Oh he has, Tsunade said with a dark look, he sworn to kill Sasuke on the battlefield. Goddamn, the redhead said with wide eyes. Didn't think shithead would have the balls to fucking kill faggy boy. Naruto paused outside the hospital and clutched his ears. Was everything always so damn loud? So then Kurakun got down on one knee and she took my leg and then pulled it back and then took my dick. Oh my god. He didn't do what I think he did, did he? He did. That two-timing bastard. Sobbing. Aruto. Naruto. A voice shouted from the side. Naruto brought his headband up over his eyes and turned to look towards the voice. The sounds assisted him with seeing and he turned to look at teammate walking towards him, with Kiba carrying Akamaru on head as usual. Kiba, Naruto greeted with a nod, Hinata, Shino. Hello Kurinai-sensei. What are you doing with your headband, Baka? Kiba asked with a smirk. Naruto smiled slightly. I lost my sight in recovery, Naruto said, not completely telling the truth and yet not lying. It's not like anyone needed to know the truth just yet. Teammate all looked at him in shock and pity. His smile dropped into a scowl and when Kiba went to place a hand on his shoulder Naruto smacked it away. I don't want your pity, the blonde growled, and I don't need your sympathy. I want your help bringing the Uchiha to justice. Kiba and Akamaru growled at the mention of the traitor and a buzzing could be heard from the stoic Aburame. He not a looked pale, but Kurinai looked disgusted with Naruto. Tuyu said she's killed about 200 people, the blonde thought, Kakashi Sensei and Uro Senen have probably killed their fair share, but I haven't killed anyone. Haku and Zabuza were the first actual kills I ever witnessed, I have to kill eventually, hopefully I can do it, that way I won't feel that bad about getting saucer, I mean, the traitor. The way Kiba and Shino act, they've accepted the fact they might have to kill, so they're in, Hinata may be weird, but she's too gentle to actually kill someone, so she's out. But with how Kurinai-sensei is looking at me, hypocritical bitch, don't look at me like that, Kurinai-sensei, the blonde growled, shocking all of Team 8. I heard your gasp and I can feel your glare. I've gotten pretty good at feeling glares, as you should know. Kurin I felt bad for judging the blonde and made to apologize, but Naruto already leapt away. She knew how the boy was looked at, as she had joined the purple-haired Dokubutsu Jonin Midorashianko more than once to look after him. The red-eyed Genjutsu mistress cursed her insensitivity and glanced again at the boy's fading silhouette, wishing she could apologize for her actions. Hinata watched her crush leap to the next building before turning to her sensei. W what D did Naruto Kunam mean, sensei? I don't know, Hinata, Kuren I fibbed, maybe you should ask him. Naruto-san's reaction to blindness is appropriate, Shino said, for having a single sense for so long, it would be similar as an Aburame to lose their hive or Inuzuki to lose their companion. Akamaru whined and Kiba looked solemn before growling, it's Sasuke's fault, I'll bet. Hell, I'll bet that Chidori caused Naruto's blindness. Bastard. Kiba, Kuren I hissed trying to keep control of her eccentric student. Kiba looked up at his sensei before sighing and bowing his head. Teammate made a last glance at Naruto's last location before turning and heading towards their training ground. Half of the members determined to work on their skills and half worried about the now blind blonde that used to have a smile on his face. Next day, here you go to Yasan, Shizun said with a smile as she wheeled a wheelchair in for the redhead. Naruto subtly helped to sit in the chair, not doing much knowing she'd get upset. They were both still wearing hospital scrubs, Naruto's a dark blue while Tuya had green. Thanks shithead, Tuya grunted out to Naruto as she stretched in the chair. She rubbed her legs and lifted one slowly before hissing in pain and clutching her leg. Naruto placed a comforting hand on her shoulder while Shizune administered a quick pain relieving jutsu on the redhead's legs. Don't try and move them for another day or so, Shizune instructed, the chakra coils in your leg were pretty bad considering how you were, er, found. So they'll take at least another week before chakra will flow correctly through your legs. I'll make sure she doesn't strain herself, Nei-chan, Naruto said grabbing the handles of her chair and wheeling her out the door. Once they were in the elevator, Naruto released his hold on the chair and stood to Tuya's left. The redhead looked up at the blind boy, so, shithead, how's the echo of some shit like that going? Do you mean, echolocation, Tuya-chan? Naruto asked with a slight smirk. Tuya narrowed her eyes. I told you not to call me that. Shithead, she growled. And I told you to stop calling me shithead, but we can't get what we want, now can we? Naruto replied. The redhead slugged him in the arm while his smirk grew. Just take me to this apartment of yours. Tuya grunted. 
Nardo's smile faltered again before his face became blank. Sure, the blonde replied. When the elevator dinged, Naruto let Tuya wheel herself out before following at a relaxed pace. He winced when they stepped outside and covered his ear, something that didn't go unnoticed by the redhead. Oi, you okay, shithead? Tuya asked. Naruto nodded while holding his head. Sensitive ears, he replied, getting a nod of understanding from the redhead. The two of them walked, or rolled in Tuya's case, in a steady pace. Tuya took the sights and remembering the details for an easier time when she had to walk around this place on her own. What a fucking dump, Tuya muttered. Naruto raised an eyebrow in amusement and she snorted, don't get me wrong shithead. It's nice compared to the other shitholes I've been to, but it has that godforsaken homey feeling about it that makes me sick. Naruto mused this over before speaking, I take it the feeling brings bad memories up. None of your fucking business, Tuya snapped. Naruto shrugged. Considering your sudden stopping of breath before your heartbeat sped up, I take it I guessed correctly, he said, but I'll drop the subject, for now. Tuya grumbled to herself, I liked you better when you were a fucking idiot. And I liked it better when I could see, Naruto snapped back harshly. Tuya smirked. Your dark side is showing again, she said, causing the blonde to pause before scowling. Damn you, he muttered, trying to calm himself down while the redhead laughed. They walked in silence as Tuya took the sights in again. As they neared the eastern district, she noticed more and more people glaring in her direction. She could tell though that most of the Konoha population didn't know who she was, aside from several shinobi, and thus the glares weren't directed at her. She looked back at the blonde, who had a fake smile on his face again. Tuya frowned. Why the fuck is he wearing his mask now? She thought before she looked back to the civilians that were glaring in his direction. Does this have something to do with his mask? Why the hell are they glaring at him? I hate not knowing things. Tuya thought as a low growl emitted from her throat. Knock it off, Tuya, Naruto grunted as he turned left down an alley. Tuya gave him a look that said he was crazy before following with grumbles to herself about dumb blind shitheads. Naruto stopped in front of a door on the right of the alley and put his hand on one of the profanities spray painted on it. Tuya arched a brow as she read it. Go back to the hell you were spawned from, demon brat? She read questioningly before looking at Naruto and asked. What the fuck? Just another stupid villager, the blonde muttered, it's about four weeks old, people haven't done this for a while, must be the invasion or the traitor. The last bit was mumbled to himself, but Tuya managed to make it out and pondered on it for a minute as Naruto opened the door. He walked into the building and held the door open so Tuya could wheel herself in. Bottom floor's yours if you want it, Naruto said, I'll take one room though until your legs are healed and you can train again. Bottom floor? Tuya repeated. Won't that piss the fucker that owns this place off? Naruto laughed, doubt it, seeing as I own it. Tuya's jaw dropped, you own this whole fucking thing? How the fuck? Sarutobi Gigi bought it for me when no one would take me in and the orphanage kicked me out, Naruto said, it was falling apart, but I managed to fix it up over the past four years. Good to know who the fucking handyman is, Tuya joked. Naruto smiled before turning and walking towards a door and opening it. Tuya wheeled herself in and looked around before looking back at the blonde. Fucking great. Love the setup. She drawled out sarcastically. The apartment was empty, nothing in it whatsoever. Naruto chuckled and walked in behind her, leaning on the wall looking like his, super, perverted sensei. I'll ask Nei-chan for some furniture, Naruto said, before waving for her to follow him and led her down to a room in the far back and opening the door. I use this place right after a day of training, Naruto said opening a door to a relaxed looking apartment, bathrooms on the right and the remote is usually on the left of the couch. Tuya gave him a blank stare before saying, shithead. I can't. Walk. Naruto kicked himself before rubbing the back of his head sheepishly, right, sorry, Tuya-chan. Guess I'll be staying with you until you're allowed to walk again. The redhead gave him a glare before replying through gritted teeth, fine. But if I wake up with you in the bed with me, again, you'll be missing something very important. It was one time. Naruto said, turning his head away, cursing his echolocation for still being able to make out her face. One time too many, Tuya growled rolling into the apartment. Naruto stayed outside the apartment for a minute before walking in behind her. He thought back to that incident a few weeks ago. He might not have remembered why he was in the bed with her, but he remembered when she woke him up, both times. The first was during a dream of some sort. Or even a nightmare. Naruto chuckled remembering her cursing out her fallen comrades, who had apparently come back from the grave to kill her, before she clung to him, snapping him from his own ramen-filled dream. It was a good dream too, he finally made Hokage and the people thanked him by making him a game of a sized bowl of ramen. Before he could take a bite, Tuya's sudden clinging woke him. 
He was about to cuss her out before realizing she was whimpering in her sleep. Not knowing what to do, Naruto tried doing something he imagined a friend would do if you had a nightmare. He hugged her, and like a snap of his fingers, her whimpering and cussing stopped. Naruto swore he could make out a ghost of a smile on her face, but shrugged it off. He doubted Tuya would smile in her sleep, he had never seen her do so before. There was always the possibility. He also whispered something to her, but had forgotten it due to the fact he said it in a sleep-ridden daze. After she was calm for a good few minutes, Naruto allowed the sound of her even breathing and heartbeat to put him to sleep. Sadly, he would be woken up for the second time, after a, thankfully, reasonable amount of rest, by the feeling of death and promised pain showering his sleeping figure. The fuck are you doing in my bed? Tuya had growled to him when he sent some chakra to his usually dark eyesight. He barely had enough time to scramble out of the bed and vanish to the other side of the room before she wailed on him mercilessly. Oi shithead. Tuya called from the kitchen part of the small apartment, get in here and make some damn food. I'm fucking starving. Naruto chuckled before walking to the kitchen and making dinner. A nice healthy cup of instant ramen, praise Kami. Hours later, you are so fucking lazy, Tuya muttered as she ate her third cup of ramen. But you're right about one thing, which amazes me, shithead. Oh? Naruto replied as he took a bite of his seventh cup of ramen, what's that, Tuya-chan, I fucking told you not to call me that, Tuya hissed before taking another bite of her ramen, but you were right about ramen. It is the fucking gift from the gods. Damn straight, Naruto agreed, slurping up a couple of stray noodles with a grin. He put the now empty cup in the pyramid-like stack they made of the instant ramen cups and smiled at the redhead, just wait until you taste old man Ijiraku's or Ayame ne chans Talk about food from heaven, can't fucking wait. Shithead, Tuya said, looking up from her cup and shaking her head, you're a fucking pig, not even a fat ass Jirobo could eat that much that fast. A, eh, well I've got a big stomach, Naruto said, patting his stomach. He looked at her as she stacked her cup on the top of the pyramid, want me to ready the bath for you? It takes the right tricks to get the water to actually heat up. Tuya's eyes seemed to glow with excitement, hell yes. Bat damn time I get a fucking bath. Naruto laughed before he stood and went to ready the bath for her. A few minutes later he came back out to tell her it was done when he found the instant ramen cups all stacked neatly in two piles by the trash. They glistened slightly as though they had been rinsed out and Naruto turned his head to Tuya, who was lounging on the couch channel surfing. Did you rinse the cups? He asked, slightly amazed. Tuya gave him a what are you, retarded? Look, no, shithead, I pissed on him, she replied sarcastically. Naruto snickered before throwing a hand and thumb over his shoulder. Tub's nice and warm for you. Tuya-chan, he said, smirking when she seemed to hastily reach for her wheelchair. His smirk turned to a look of embarrassment and he scratched the back of his head, I need to ask Bachan or Nechan for some clothes for you, but I have a dresser in the bedroom that has some clothes in there. Good to know, shithead, Tuya said as she wheeled past him in a hurry towards the bathroom. Naruto chuckled before taking her spot on the couch and changing the channel to a movie. A princess few in film, eh? The blonde said with a grin. Well I've only seen them all a billion times, but I do enjoy Koi Yuki Haim's work. Tuya relaxed in the bath inside in bliss, some fucking candles and it'd be a fucking spa. Wonder if shithead's got anything good to read in here. The redhead looked up and around the room before grabbing a book from the small shelf in the bathroom. It was a blank cover but fairly large, almost like a child's book. Tuya smirked, if this is one of those bitch how to read books, I'll laugh my ass off. She opened the first page and her eyes widened. It turned out to be Naruto's only photo album, which he had hidden in the apartment from the many raids that had taken place over the years. The first image was that of an old man with short white hair holding an infant with blonde fuzz in his arms and smiling. Beneath it read, For Naruto-kun, from Sarutobi Gigi, in hopes you'll be able to treasure moments in your life forever. Tuya smiled slightly before shaking her head of the sappy feeling and turned the page. This picture was that of a four or five year old blonde with a smile on his face. He was missing one tooth and had a bowl of ramen in front of him. Leaning into the picture with him was a brown haired teenage girl that was smiling. The words below the image read, Meeting the Ichirakus, Naruto discovered ramen, something that I have a feeling will cost my wallet much pain. Not shown, the seven bowls before his current one. Kami it's almost as bad as paperwork. Tuya had to hold back a laugh at that. Whoever was writing this book, who Tuya believed to be this Sarutobi Gigi that was mentioned before had a good sense of humor. She turned the page again and rolled her eyes with a smirk. The image was of the blonde holding his arms out above his head in front of what had to be the Konoha Academy. Its inscription read, first day at the academy, and the first step on the road to Hokage. I wish you luck Naruto. That time she did laugh, 
albeit quietly before she turned the page. The next page was puzzling as she read its inscription. The image was of a couple years older Naruto in front of the academy, but his smile was the fake one she knew now, his eyes showed nothing but sadness. In the background, several kids were wearing Konoha headbands and a few were sneering in Naruto's direction. The inscription was odd as well, passing the Janan exam, which was crossed out and replaced with, there is always next time, Naruto. Don't forget your promise to me, because that is your Nindo. Tuyu turned the page again, and it was a similar picture, instead with Naruto sitting on a swing and looking back at kids wearing Konoha headbands. She frowned as the image of Naruto was wearing that orange eyesore she had seen him in before when they first met and he was weakly smiling, the smile not coming close to meeting his eyes despite the size of it. The inscription below had another sentence crossed out, but it was too far gone to be read. Instead, written below it was, The road to Hokage is harder than it seems, but with faith and prosperity, and you will make it, Naruto-kun. Jigi, frowning, Tuya hesitantly turned the page before feeling slightly relieved. In the picture, a scarred shinobi wearing a flak jacket was sitting with Naruto at the ramen stand and smiling towards the camera. The sadness wasn't evident in Naruto's eyes this time and a true smile was on his face. Tuya read the inscription and released a breath she was holding. It read, Umino Iruka. Chunin of Kanahagakura and Naruto's class sensei takes over the hellish I mean, delightful duty of paying for Naruto's ramen. Sucker. After rereading it, another soft laugh came from Tuya before she, again hesitantly, turned the page. There was a picture of Naruto wearing white makeup with red designs in a dramatic pose and another with Naruto just standing there with a grin. The two images had normal smiles, neither true happiness nor fake, and in both he was wearing that goddamn orange jumpsuit. She read the inscriptions below it and smirked. Only Kami knows where Naruto got that makeup. And finally, after seven pictures, a decent one for Naruto's ID. Still smirking, Tuya turned the page again and looked at the image before doing a double take. In it, a white haired man with a mask in his headband covering his left eye had both hands on the heads of Naruto and the fag. Between them was a girl with bubblegum pink hair, this caused Tuya to die a little on the inside. Red hair was badass, but pink hair? Who the hell had pink hair? That must be that banshee that came in a few days ago. Tuya mused before reading the inscription, Team 7 is reformed, a fitting tittle for Naruto's Janan squad. I can only wish him more luck. Now. What the hell does that mean? A fitting tittle? Figuring that she'd had enough time in the tub, Tuya slid the photo album back where it was before pulling herself out of the tub, very carefully, and sitting on the toilet seat with the lid down. She grabbed the towel Naruto had left out and dried herself off before glancing back at the closed photo album. Making a quick decision, Tuya snatched the album and put it on her wheelchair before pulling herself into it with the towel wrapped around her. As she left the bathroom, she glanced over towards the room Naruto was in. He was asleep on the couch, or so it seemed, with his headband on his eyes and facing the TV. Tuya quickly wheeled herself into the bedroom and stopped in front of the dresser. She pulled a few drawers open before finding clothes and pulling out a black shirt with a swirl in its center. After searching the drawers, she found his boxers and pulled a pair out before snorting. Fucker has damned ramen boxers, who would have thought they even made those? Tuya muttered as she pulled them on. Pulling the towel off the bed, Tuya threw it over in the corner. With a last glance to the album on the bed, Tuya hesitantly looked at the first picture again and then at the inscription. Her eyes widened when she made the connection. His Gigi was that Sondaime that the molester killed, I helped kill him, Tuya realized. She frowned suddenly, why doesn't he hate me? She then wheeled back out to the room Naruto was in to see him sitting on the floor in the lotus position with his headband around his neck and his eyes shut. With an arched brow, Tuya wheeled closer and wrapped her knuckles on his head, again surprised by the shocking fact his hair was defying gravity and was softer than it looked. She shook those thoughts from her head as the previous revelation came to her mind. Ow, Naruto said, his eyes flying open and darting to her direction before they swirled slightly. Damn it, Tuya-chan, I was actually in the middle of something. Well next time do that shit somewhere other than the center of the room, Tuya snapped as she lifted herself from her chair and onto the couch. She winced and rubbed her arm after doing so feeling a pain in her tricep. Naruto stood and tilted his head slightly, you okay? Pulled a fucking muscle, Tuya grumbled, damn it. Fucking hurts. I could send Gamakichi to get Shizune-chan or Bachan, Naruto suggested. Tuya stopped rubbing her arm but stayed silent and lowered her head, hiding her face from the blonde. Naruto took a hesitant step forward, Tuya-chan, why? The redhead whispered. Naruto arched a brow and took another half step forward. Why what? He asked cautiously. Something was wrong, and Naruto knew it. He had a bad feeling, and usually those feelings were always spot on. Why are you so fucking nice to me? 
Tuya shouted, raising her head, revealing a pained and confused look on her face. Why? Why are you so damned nice despite my fucking origin? I fucking helped kill the San Daime. I helped that fucking faggot leave this place. I used to work for Orochimaru. Doesn't that piss you off? Don't you want me dead? I don't understand, Naruto said quietly but Tuya shouted again, you fucking idiot. The redhead shouted, why are you so damn nice to me? Why don't you hate me? Kami knows the hag hates me, all your little faggy friends from that mission for the fag hate me. God damn it, the fucking village hates me. Why don't you? A slap echoed throughout the room and Tuya found herself looking to the left. Naruto lowered his hand from its post-slapping position and went into a relaxed stance. Look at me, Tuya-chan, Naruto said softly. Slowly, the redhead turned to look at the boy that was assigned to be her bodyguard. Naruto's purple eyes were looking at her with worry and she felt like another part of her died. Feeling as though she didn't deserve that look, Tuya looked away again. Damn it Tuya-chan, look at me, Naruto said, putting his hands on her cheeks and forcing eye contact. Tuya felt heat rush to her face before shaking the feeling off and glaring at the blonde before her. What is wrong with you? He asked, if you don't tell me, don't think I won't get a damned Yamanaka in here. You're still a civilian under watch and as your bodyguard I can make it happen. Tuya hesitated before speaking quietly, why don't you fucking hate me? Just tell me damn it. Naruto released her face and sat down a good two feet from her, giving the girl he had known for about a month and a half some space, because I know you. You don't fucking know me. Tuya growled with a glare. Naruto smiled slightly, pissing her off further. I know enough, he said. He leaned back on his hands and looked at the ceiling. I know you were involved with Gigi's death, but you weren't directly responsible for it. It'd be wrongful blame for me to hate you for what Orochimaru team did. As for the traitor, I know now he chose to go. It wasn't like you kidnapped him. You don't know that. Tuya snarled, what if I did? What would you do if you found out I had put a genjutsu on him to make him want to go to Orochimaru? The blonde paused. I don't know, the old me would have demanded you tell me where Sasuke was and then rush off without a plan. Tuya waited a minute before asking, and now? I'd probably hand you over to Anbu Ayanti or ask Bachan for instructions, which would probably be the same, Naruto said. He looked back at her with his pale purple eyes, ever since I've gotten these eyes I've been, calm. Hell, I always wore a mask without a thought, but now I have to actually force it, I don't enjoy it, but I have to do it. Why? Tuya asked. Naruto smiled sadly. You were one of Orochimaru's elite warriors, he said, probably given information on us. Come on, think back to when you got information on the shinobi of Konoha. The Janan specifically. Orochimaru may be a cold, heartless and a closet molester, but he was not stupid. Tuya narrowed her eyes before thinking back. She racked her brain for information on the Konoha Janan and Naruto's and the fag's generation for information on the blonde. Eventually it came to her mind and she recited it. You somehow failed the Janan exam two times, she said, before remembering the picture and jumping ahead, you participated in one A-ranked mission where you encountered Momochi Zabuza before he died. You had a B-ranked mission to Yuki no Kuni where you defeated a tyrant overlord and put an actress on the throne. I actually want to hear about that sometime. After that you did mostly D-ranks, damn that had to fucking suck. And you are the... Her eyes widened as she realized what she was about to say. She looked at Naruto the wide eyes in question and Naruto nodded with the sad smile still in place. Say it, he said softly as his smile died. Tuya swallowed before whispering, you're the container of the QB no Kitsune that attacked Konoha 13 years ago. Which is why Konoha's civilians don't really like me, he said before grinning, well, most of them do now, after I kicked Gara's ass and brought Bachan back. Some of them blame me for the traitors, well, betrayal. Can't win them all, though. Tuya had a dry throat. That's why he didn't hate her. He knew how she felt and she knew how he felt. They understood each other and understood the pain of being hated for something out of their control. Tuya wondered if this is what the hag was talking about before she left the hospital. I take it from the look of realization you asked Bachan about my mask? Naruto asked, snapping her from her thoughts. Tuya nodded and Naruto sighed. I wish sometimes she'd actually tell people things about my life so I wouldn't have to, the blonde muttered before smiling back at Tuya. But that's not the whole reason why I don't hate you. The redhead looked at him in shock. There was more? This she had to hear. Naruto grinned, I believe everyone, especially people like us, deserve a second chance. Chapter 3, Awake and Alive by Skillet It's been two weeks since Tuya was discharged from the hospital. She had regained some use of her legs, but she wasn't as fast as she used to be. 
the fact Naruto had become even more skilled with his Uzugan and could now activate his first ability with his eyes was what seemed to keep her off her own pity. His first ability was called Kyufuri Ramu, and with it, he could discover your worst fear and then trap you in a genjutsu revolving around said fear. Unlike the Manjiko Sharingan, which sucks more and more chakra with its prolonged use, the Uzugan only needed small amounts of the user's chakra to activate and keep the hold on the target's mind. Eye contact wasn't needed either, it did make things more effective though. It was successfully first used in a council meeting on a certain civilian counselor that momentarily forgot about the Sun Daime's law and threatened to ya. After that, Tsunade politely asked him not to do that on another Konoha villager or she would be forced to seal his eyes away. He agreed, only saying he would use it if to defend himself or to ya. He sent a warning glare to all of the civilian council members before nodding respectively to the shinobi council members and leaving with Tuya. The red-headed girl asked why he came to her defense again, and the blonde responded with his same bodyguard slash precious person line. Tuya had also been helping him with his own genjutsu training. Naruto came to her asking for assistance with that skill, and only when he begged on his knees, offering obscene amounts of ramen, did she accept. She drove him hard, making him start out with mastering the easiest genjutsu first. The Bunshine. It took him a good portion of the second week of her release, but eventually he could create the technique without the use of hand seals. Tuya then took it upon herself to make sure his chakra control was beyond compare. Despite his constant complaints that she was his charge and he should be focusing his attention on her safety, Tuya eventually convinced him the only way she knew how, she threatened his manhood. They were currently at training ground 26, the Nidimes waterfall. I'm telling you I can't do it. Naruto growled from his spot standing on the water and just barely balancing kunai on his fingertips, I have too much chakra. Then add in that fucking leaf technique, Tuya shouted back from her spot lounging next to the river. She was carving a flute herself out of a log she had taken from the blonde stash. Her eyes were narrowed in determination to make the flute as durable as possible. The last thing she wanted was for someone to break her flute, again. Naruto grumbled before he suddenly silenced and tossed the kunai in the air attaching chakra strings to them and bringing them back to his hands as he readied himself to defend Tuya. Show yourself. The blonde shouted. Tuya hit her flute in progress and readied the kunai she was using to carve with in a defensive manner. Ma, ma, Naruto. A lazy voice drawled out, it's just me. Naruto chucked a kunai at the voice's origin and the man cried out, my book. The blind boy grinned, well that's one way to keep my positivity up. Sorry. Kakashi Sensei. The silver haired Jonin grumbled as he walked out while cradling his impaled porn. He looked at the blonde that was standing on the water with an arrow die before blinking. His student had his headband around his eyes and was wearing black shinobi pants and sandals. For a shirt, he wore a dark blue judogi and he had an orange jacket similar to Tsunade's signature jacket. On the back, in a blue circle, was the kanji for Whirlpool on it. The inner lining of the jacket was the same dark blue as his judogi, obviously reversible for when he had to go on missions. Kakashi's visible and hidden eyes widened in shock. I heard from Kurana that he had lost his sight, but I didn't actually believe it. Kakashi thought sadly before he unclenched his fist he was unaware was bleeding from the palm, Sasuke's betrayal will be the last thing he does to harm Konoha. I swear on my sensei's grave not to train another team until the Uchiha traitors are brought to justice, perhaps it's time to go back to Anbu. Sensei? Naruto asked as he tilted his head, I know you're still here and you're upset. What did you come here for? Kakashi snapped from his musing and I smiled at the blonde, just checking up on you. Heard you were hanging out with a redhead now, didn't think you'd find a girlfriend so fast considering your condition you've. Several kunai embedded themselves in the tree behind the jonin and he looked back to see Naruto grinning maliciously, you're lucky Tuya chan can barely run or you'd be locked in your room out of fear. He was hit with a rock in the side of the head and Kakashi looked at the attacker. The red haired girl scowled at the blonde and cracked her knuckles. What have I told you about calling me that? Shithead? She asked Naruto. Naruto grumbled and rubbed his head. Don't throw things at me. The blonde shouted back. Tuya walked over to him and slammed her fist into the top of his head. Fine, I'll settle for beating your ass, shithead, she said with a smirk before walking back towards the village with a slightly noticeable limb. Naruto rubbed his head again before picking his kunai up and following after her. Kakashi walked slowly behind them before glaring slash looking at his student. So Naruto, he started. About my book. I'm not asking Uro Senin for another copy, Naruto interrupted. Maybe if you were less perverted, you could get that crazy snake lady you always mutter to yourself about. Kakashi whacked Naruto in the back of the head. Shut up, Gaki. Ow. My poor head. The blonde whined. That's not nice, Sensei. Beating on the blind kid. So? Kakashi said before a thought came to his mind. Why are you with that redhead? 
she your girlfriend? A rock came flying from ahead of them and Kakashi ducked. He looked up to see Tuya glaring daggers at him. Naruto stopped and sighed. Oh, now you've done it, the blonde muttered. He held his hand up in a single hand seal before shun shining away. Kakashi blinked at where his student once was before seeing the redhead crack her knuckles. Was I right? Kakashi asked somewhat cheekily. His last conscious thought was, she's just like me Nato sensei's girlfriend and Rinchan. Naruto sat down at the Ichiraku stand with a smile. Hey old man, I am a Nechan, a miso ramen to start and ready a veggie ramen for Tuya chan. Coming up, Tuchi said as he returned to his cooking. Ayame leaned against her side of the counter. So you take Tuya out yet, Naruto-kun? Ayame asked with a smile. The blonde sputtered for a moment. It's not like that, Naruto shouted, alerting a nearby group of leaf rookies to his whereabouts. Minutes later, Naruto found himself surrounded by his group of friends. Naruto, where have you been man? Troublesome blonde. Munch, munch, yeah, where were you? Munch, munch. A-R-Y-U-O-O-K, and Naruto-kun, how are your eyes, Naruto-san? Due to the time you have been out of the hospital, I assume you've gotten used to the, unfortunate, darkness. Is something wrong with your eyes, Naruto? Yosh. My youthful friend. You must be back to your youthful self. Hurrah for youthfulness. I shall celebrate by climbing the Hokage mountain with my teeth. And if I cannot do that, then I shall run to Suna and back on my hands five times. Naruto, where'd you get the clothes? You actually look, good, like Tsunade-sama. Are you her new apprentice, Naruto? I'm so jealous. Where have you been Yubaka? Everyone's been worried sick about you. Everyone shut up, Naruto shouted, causing all of the rookies to become silent. He pushed Choji and Shikamaru back and held his hand out. Come on, Tuya-chan. Food's getting cold. All of the Sasuke retrieval squad gasped in shock when they saw her, aside from Shikamaru who muttered his catchphrase, and the rest of the group, the girls and Shino, looked at the shocked ones questioningly. Akamaru growled at the red-headed girl but silenced when Naruto released a growl of his own. Naruto? Sakura asked, who is this? Naruto paused in mid-bite and sighed before replying, this is Tuya Chandaja's flying fist don't do that. And she is my friend in charge. You will not hurt her, these are orders from Tsunade herself. The SRS felt their eyes widen and looked at Shikamaru who nodded and sat on Naruto's left while Tuya sat on his right. The redhead and blonde both ate their ramen while the rookies all watched on in quiet, various questions running through their minds. Kiba couldn't take it anymore and blurted out, Okay, why is she here? I thought she was dead. She isn't. Get over it or else, Naruto grunted before returning to his ramen. Tuya was quiet throughout the whole ordeal, but Naruto could tell she was scared. Her heart was jumping around wildly in her chest and her breathing, although calm, was forced. He finished his bowl and left money on the counter. We'll be going now old man, Naruto said as he put a hand on Tuya's shoulder, Thanks for the bowl. Maybe next time we'll get more. Ah. All right Naruto, Tuchi said before grinning evilly, don't forget to use protection. The two teens flushed bright red while the rookies all gasped and looked at the two questioningly. Tuya gave him a look that promised pain and suffering while Naruto clenched his jaw and led the redhead away before she lost her cool. They left the stand, followed immediately by the rookies. Naruto's eye twitched in annoyance as he overheard their whispers. Who is that girl with Naruto? Sakura asked. She's a member of the Sound 4 that helped Sasuke team escape, Kiba growled. Shikamaru sighed, but Naruto's right, the Chunin said, Tsunade sama ordered him to protect her. She might become a member of Konoha soon. What? The others whisper yelled. Sakura clenched her fist, that baka, she took Sasuke-kun away from me. I'll kill her. Naruto stopped walking. In a blur of blue and orange, he had moved to being in the center of the rookie's small group. Lee gasped at the speed the blonde showed, it was as fast as Sasuke was before he trained with Kakashi for the finals of the Chunin exams, and what was more shocking was there were no signs of chakra enhancement in his movement. Naruto grabbed Sakura's shoulder and pushed her to the ground with ease. After her yelp of surprise, she looked up to glare at the blonde to see a kunai looking her in the eye from the blonde himself. The other rookies stood shocked as Naruto snarled at the pink at, Sasuke is a dead man, the blonde growled, he took my eyes, ending our friendship. He betrayed the leaf, ending his immunity. He will fall at my hands. Don't take your anger out on someone who had nothing to do with this choice. What are you talking about? Ino shouted, afraid to step in because of the key radiating off her fellow blonde. Sasuke-kun was kidnapped. Naruto growled, is that what everyone was told by the council? Well, Sakura? Was he kidnapped? You saw him last before he left the village gates. Was he dragged out kicking and screaming? Was he under a genjutsu? You should know, 
you are adept at detecting them. Sakura felt her heart pound in her chest before she answered meekly, no, but, but nothing, the blonde growled before putting his kunai away and standing, not moving to help the girl up, Sasuke left of his own accord. And because of him, I'm blind. I will never be able to see again. Out of all of you, I expected some sort of friendship and support from my teammate but all I get is scorn for doing my job. It seems all this village knows though is to hold a grudge, you included. You sicken me, Sakura. Once my mission is over, I might go through with my consideration of leaving Team 7. With that, he turned and went back to the redhead side. Tuyu turned to the blind boy and asked, Did you mean all that? Naruto nodded, I see now that those few that I called my friends want nothing more than their precious Sasuke-sama back. If they knew what burden I carried, they would not understand. You're judging them too quickly, Tuyu said to the blonde. He turned his head in her direction. They did the same to you, Tuyu-chan, he said before facing forward. I only gave them something to think about. He's right you know, Shikamaru said as he watched the two leave, she was only following orders. But, they took Sasuke-kun Sakura started as Zeno helped her up. Neji interrupted her. The Uchiha, Neji hissed icily, left of his own accord. That girl, Tuya, was only doing her job Orochimaru gave her. Wouldn't you follow his order if you were under his hold? Still, they shouldn't have taken Sasuke. Sakura continued to be dense. The Uchiha chose his own choice in leaving. Shino said in his monotone voice, the sounds of buzzing in his coat, he is a traitor to Konoha and as the law states, he is liable to death. It's only logical that he is killed by who he betrayed most. I for one will be assisting Naruto should he ask for it. Naruto has no right to kill Sasuke-kun, Sakura shouted. She was slapped across the face by the person every least expected. Focus Sakura-chan, Lee said with tears in his eyes, Naruto-kun has lost his eyes to Sasuke. Sasuke has no right to be a Konoha shinobi anymore. He has injured one of our own and betrayed our village. Everyone else here sees it, why can't you? Naruto opened the door to his apartment and stiffened, what do you want, crazy snake lady? It's Sanko-san to you, you brat, Anko said as she punched him in the head. While the blonde cradled his abused head for the umpteenth time, Anko continued, and it's time to see if this girl is worth our troubles. I'm going with you, Naruto said. Anko sighed. Hokage-sama said you'd say that. The purple-haired woman said, fine. Let's go Gakus. I've got shit to do, and this is in the way of that. She led the two from the apartment towards the Anbu and building. Tuya looked at Naruto. Why are you coming with me, shithead? The redhead asked quietly. That's something else that changed with the girl, she was more quiet and reserved around Naruto. She would drop her mask in front of him, but as soon as someone else came into the conversation or area, she would bring it right back up. I'm your bodyguard. Naruto replied with a reassuring smile, it's my job to make sure no one hurts you until Bachan says otherwise. Even then though, I'll still probably have your back. Tuya blushed slightly and asked, why? Same reason I had your back when we were at the ramen stand, the blonde replied before he smiled at her, you're my friend and a precious person. To say her face was red would be an understatement. Tuya was a darker shade of her hair and her heart felt like it was going to burst from happiness. She bowed her head slightly to hide the stupid smile on her face from the world. You're my friend too, Naruto, she whispered, barely loud enough for the blonde to hear. Her thoughts continued with, and I'll do what I can to have your back when you face that asshole that did this to you. Aw, isn't that sweet? Anko asked as she held the door to the Anbu Ion tea open, Gakus in love. Makes me want to tear up and cry. Maybe even write beautiful poetry. Shut up psycho, the two replied in sync as they walked past her. Tuya's reply being more embarrassed than her annoyed counterpart. Why does everyone think we're an item? Naruto whispered, Kami, it gets so annoying. Why yeah, Tuya agreed before they entered a room with a table and two chairs in it. On the right wall was a mirror, but Naruto could tell from the sounds emitting from it there were more people in there. The demon spawn is in there, hissed a voice laced with hatred. What did you say? A growling tsunade asked. And nothing, Hokage-sama. The voice replied, fear stricken. That's what I thought. Tsunade replied. The whispers of hatred didn't die down despite her unspoken threat. Naruto turned back to Tuya and saw her sitting in a chair, nervously glancing at him occasionally. He placed his hand on her shoulder to reassure her that her fears were for naught. This seemed to relax her, if only a little bit. Anko spun the other char opposite Tuya around before sitting down in it. Here's the lowdown, she said, we want information on he who molests and his bitches. Subtle, muttered Naruto. Anko shot him a grin before looking back at Tuya. What can you tell us? Anko asked with narrowed eyes. And so Tuya spilled every bit of information she could think of. Aside from the occasional glance at the mirrored wall, 
Tuya came off as completely steeled during her interrogation. She had revealed several hidden bases on the outskirts of Hai no Kuni and revealed many of the Oni Jutsu Orochimaru had developed over the years. Anko wrote all this down, repeating questions several times to make sure she wasn't lying. The blonde snorted when he realized that fact, as he could instantly tell when someone was lying due to his echolocation. Naruto had to keep himself in check as he heard the disbelieving whispers from the civilian council that was behind the mirror. He didn't even know why they were there. Eventually the subject Anko was most passionate about came up, and then things got crazy. What do you mean you don't know how to remove the damned curse mark? Anko demanded. Naruto took a protective step forward from his spot. Back off, Gaki, Anko shouted at him before rounding back on Tuya. Well? Tell me what you know. I did, damn it, Tuya shouted back. Fuck bitch, if I knew how to get this fucking curse mark off, do you think I'd still have this fucking thing on my neck? Fuck no. It hurts like a bitch. Don't lie to me, Anko shouted. You're fucking psychotic. The redhead shouted back, when I fucking said I don't know, I fucking meant I don't fucking know. A buzzer was pressed and Tsunade's voice said, that's enough, Midorashi. I think we've learned all we can. Anko sat back with a small glare at Tuya, her glare being matched evenly from the redhead. Naruto coughed to earn both of the girls' attention slash glares. Can we leave now? He asked as his stomach suddenly rumbled loudly. Tuya groaned and palmed herself in the face while Anka laughed heartily. The blonde smiled sheepishly and rubbed the back of his head. I'm really hungry. Yeah, I guess you're clear, Anko said before the door was opened and Tsunade walked in. Sorry Gaki, Tsunade said with a grin, getting a pouting look from the younger blonde, but the council just approved Tuya's enrollment into our shinobi forces. We even have a select squad to put her in. Ah, the blonde said with a dejected tone. He turned to Tuya, guess this is goodbye then. Tuya forced a smile back to the blonde and replied, yeah. Thank god I'll be able to get away from your annoying ass, shithead. Naruto chuckled, I'll miss you too, Tuya-chan. The redhead threw a punch and Naruto leaned back to dodge it. Tsunade chuckled, earning the both of their attention. The god I'm gave the two teens a smile. Who said you'd be separated? Tsunade asked with a raised eyebrow. I've had Anbu watching you too, and I, along with several of my advisors, have decided that you two form a better team than we thought was possible. We just need to find you both a sensei. Nani? Are you serious Bachan? Naruto asked with a huge grin. Even Tuya had a smile on her face at hearing those words. She had been dreading the separation from Naruto. He understood her, something that was new to Tuya, and he never scolded her. He was her best friend, yet another first for the redhead and Tuya didn't want to lose the chance to keep her own promise she made with herself concerning the blind boy. Yes Naruto, Tsunade said before throwing the two teens another curveball, I've decided to let you two choose your sensei. Unorthodox, yes, but it will prove to be highly effective. I can give you a list of a select few who are free of duty and a small amount of information on them. Shizun will drop the paperwork off at your apartment, Tuya, and even assist you if you want. It might be easier with Shizun there to help us, Tuya mused using her own unique nickname for the first apprentice to the Hokage, plus, she's your assistant, hag, so she might even have more information than you. Tsunade gained a tick on her forehead, what was that you little bitch? You heard me you old hag. Tuya replied with a smirk. Naruto snickered in the background, and put an innocent smile on his face when Tsunade turned to glare at him. The Hokage grumbled something along the lines of pesky lovesick brats but it was lost to both teens, even with Naruto's uncanny hearing. You're sure this is okay? Ino asked as Sakura peeled a wooden plank away from one of the windows to a room on the bottom floor of Naruto's apartment complex. The two had decided to get a sneak attack on the redhead while Naruto would be, most likely, engrossed in getting a new mission. What they hadn't taken into account was the fact that they had no clue where this girl was staying in the complex aside from knowing Naruto had been letting her stay with him. They decided to do it in the mid-afternoon. The Baka won't care, Sakura said as she plied another plank away, it's not as if he owns the complex. That man said she was staying here, so all we have to do is find her room and then get the drop on the bitch. We'll force her to tell us where Sasuke-kun is. Then we can save him from Orochimaru team and focus on keeping Naruto away from Sasuke-kun. It's full pro oof. The last plank came off easily, surprising Sakura and causing her to fall back. The platinum blonde, who usually felt she was always right in her actions, was feeling very unsure of this plan. There was a point where she drew the line and breaking and entering into a trained ninja's apartment, no matter how injured they are, was never a good idea. As Sakura climbed into the apartment, Ino hesitated. She had a bad feeling about this. Sakura, who had ungracefully landed in the apartment, turned to look at her best friend. Come on, Ino pig. The banshee whispered and yet managed to make it shriek, 
for Sasuke-kun, yeah, Ino said with less certainty in her voice, for Sasuke-kun. The two wandered through the apartment, searching for signs of the, now former, Otto Kunoichi's home. They were unaware that Tuya had relocated herself to the top floor along with Naruto as soon as she could walk. They were also unaware Naruto was in the lounge room that used to be Tuya's apartment. Showering after a quick training session Tuya made him do to burn some extra calories. Ino and Sakura heard the running shower, due to their, completely worthless in Sakura's case, so mainly Ino's, shinobi skills, and ran to the last door on the right. The door was unlocked, to their surprise, probably so the Baka can get in and baby her some more, Sakura thought as she entered the apartment, he's the traitor, not Sasuke-kun. Sasuke-kun can do no wrong. CHA. Time to kick some auto bitch ass. The shower suddenly turned off, causing the two fan girls to dart behind the couch and hide. Footsteps approached the main room from the back and the two girls readied themselves to attack, one being hesitant in readying herself. Their preparation was for naught when Naruto walked out. Clad in only a towel, Ino gaped at the small definition the blonde had. In a few years, he might actually turn out to be quite a catch. Add the small water droplets still clinging to his body and the way the random necklace gleamed from being wet and his damp hair that was falling over his eyes slightly, hiding them. Heck, Ino thought he was the catch now. Ino's only coherent thought as she stared at the blonde from behind the couch was, Oh man, is this why he not always blushed around Naruto? Sakura's brain short-circuited. She was trying to comprehend the images her eyes were seeing. Allow me to put into words the thinking process of Sakura's current mind state. Naruto everyone knows equals dork, dumbass, orange clad, failure as a ninja, clone prone, ramen addict. Energetic, hyper, prankster, buffoon. New Naruto equals evil, due to the threat on Sasuke's life. Serious, fast, blind, hot, aggressive, mean, hot, apparently smarter, calm, dangerous, hot. In short, new Naruto's description and Naruto everyone knows description didn't match up, causing Sakura's mind to continuously proclaim error. Does not compute. Error. Initiate self destruct sequence. I know you're there, the blonde said. Shaking the two girls, well Eno anyway, from their thoughts as he cleaned his ear out with his pinky to remove the excess water, what do you want? I'm hungry and I've got shit to do concerning my team. This got Sakura's attention and she leapt out from behind the couch. She pulled a kunai out, I won't let you hurt Sasuke-kun. Naruto's calm look hardened and a small frown crossed his face. Eno shrunk back behind the couch, but kept the blonde in her sights with wide eyes. This new Naruto was scary. I wasn't even thinking about the traitor or you. Sakura, the blonde said. He noted the kunai and scowled, are you really going to attack me, a fellow Konoha shinobi? That can end in death Sakura, you're lucky I still consider you my friend or I might actually charge you. Sakura blinked in confusion, wh what do you mean? Naruto allowed a small grin to appear on his face, and you were the smartest shinan in our class? I'm shocked, here I thought you'd have memorized every last small fact Iruka sensei fed you. Sakura scowled and her anger rose. Was that a jibe to my forehead? You said that not me, the blonde replied. In a shriek of rage, Sakura leapt at him, causing the blonde to drop his smile. He raised his fist quickly, landing a blow in Sakura's gut as she flew at him. The girl's eyes widened before she passed out from the pain. Naruto picked her up, ungraciously, and set her on the couch. He turned to face Ino, who gasped as she saw his eyes. Naruto, why your eyes, she said. The boy immediately scowled and rushed to the makeshift kitchen grabbing a rag and tying it around his eyes. He turned back to face Eno. My eyes are in a rank secret, the blonde said, this is punishable by life in prison. Do you understand? I do, Eno replied with a fast nod. Naruto relaxed and smiled. Good. Please take Sakura to Shizune-chan and tell her exactly what transpired and you saw. Do not take her to anyone else, Naruto said, I'd do it but you both decided to come in at a, an opportune moment. Eno blushed and struggled to lift her friend onto her feet. Naruto escorted them to the door that opened closer to the hospital before returning to his room to dress. As he passed the framed copy of his Team 7 picture he paused before punching it and shattering the frame. He left the small apartment without haste after that, and went to the upper floors, where his and Tuya's actual rooms were. The Team 7 photograph was left lying on the ground, half out of the shattered frame. And then I dragged forehead here like he said too, Ino said as she finished explaining her story to Tsunade. The Hokage was called from her office when Shizun saw Sakura who the current fire shadow was considering to make her apprentice of this generation, unconscious. Tsunade rubbed her forehead. I need a drink, she muttered before she looked down at the pink-haired girl lying on the bed, resting. She actually pulled a kunai on Nagaki? Well, 
I'm not one to believe that a former teammate would do that to one of their friends, but this girl is a Yamanaka, they kind of have their own unwritten law concerning honesty when retelling a situation. This is a huge mess of paperwork just waiting for me, I can feel it, Tsunade grumbled. She looked at Shizuna and said, grab the files I told you about from my office and prescribe Haruno-san a few days worth of sessions with Inochi. Then head over to the brat's home and give them a hand. Hi Tsunade-sama, the black-haired assistant to the Hokage said with a bow before she left to do as she was told. Tsunade then turned to Ino, who looked like she had a question but was trying to keep from blurting it out. Tsunade sighed and waved her hand, telling her to go ahead. What was wrong with his eyes? And just why is he guarding that Tuya girl? What did he mean about his team if he wasn't talking about Forehead or Sasuke Kun? The blonde girl asked in one breath before she sighed with relief at getting it all out. Good questions, Tsunade said, crossing her arms and giving the girl a look, but I have one of my own. Why are you still compassionate to Uchiha Sasuke? He is officially in the bingo book, as a B-rank bounty. But, Ino started, until Tsunade held her hand up. If you're trying to convince me otherwise, don't bother, Tsunade said sternly. The civilian council members have already tried, and failed might I add. Uchiha Sasuke is a traitor to Konoha, and does have the option of being brought back for a trial, but it is most likely if, and that is if, a hunter shinobi finds him, they'll have to kill him. Ino hung her head in defeat before looking back up, okay, I get it, but what about my questions? Naruto's eyes are, restricted to few people's knowledge, Tsunade said, causing Ino to deflate slightly, but don't get me wrong, he is blind and it is the Uchiha's fault. As to your other two questions, I guess I can answer them at once. Tuya, up until today, was a fugitive of auto healing in Konoha. He was assigned as her primary bodyguard. Now that she is a Konoha Kunoichi, she is assigned to Naruto's new team. And new team? Ino said with shock, knowing how Sakura might respond to this, B but what about forehead? Or Kakashi sensei? Sakura will rotate between Shinan teams until she makes Chunin, the Hokage replied, as for Hitake. Well, that's unsure for now, but he's a big boy. Oh okay, the young Yamanaka replied before bowing, thank you, Hokage-sama. At your leave. Yeah, give a nurse a call if Sakura wakes up, Tsunade said with a stretch as she left the room. Ina looked back at Sakura and sighed. Her friend was going to have a hard time accepting Sasuke's fate, or her own for that matter. Tuya walked over to the door and opened it. The black-haired woman smiled at her. Hello there Tuya, Shizun said. I brought the possible candidates in my own opinion, but is the opinion refundable? Naruto called from inside the building. Tuya snorted in amusement before standing to the side and letting the chuckling Shizune in. Naruto was lounging on the couch, flipping through a book written in braille. Tuya walked over to the blonde and smacked at his bare feet, making the blonde sit up, and sat in the spot his feet used to occupy. Shizune smirked. You two sure adjusted fast, she said, looking between them. Or is there a reason for that? The two in question growled at what she was insinuating. Shizun laughed at their choice of response. She sat in the chair across from them and laid some files out on the table. Naruto randomly grabbed one before whistling and grinning. I love my dojutsu, he said as he read the file. The information was typed using a typewriter, so the words were pressed, meaning he could either read it from echolocation or by running his hands over the words. He did both in an effort to be sure he got all information correct. That is Uzuki Uwago, Naruto, Shizun said, despite seeing he was reading it, I've met her before. She's around my age and a seasoned Anbu member. She specializes in Kenjutsu. Might be a good choice, Tuyu said before smirking at Naruto. Bet you shithead would enjoy having two hot kunoichi on his team, wouldn't you, pervert? Bite me, replied the blonde as he fought a blush back from appearing on his face. He switched files with Tuya and went over the next person. This Aoba person sounds good, Naruto said, as he ran his hand over the name of the person. Tuya nodded from her spot. Who is he? Shizune asked with a raised eyebrow. Yamashiro Aoba, Tuya said, he's a Takuho, looks like he specializes in all areas. He's in the interrogation and torture department, well, the Konoha INT anyway. Remind me to stay away from that faggy building for the rest of my life, shithead. Done. Naruto said as he picked up another file, okay, what the, Nechan, why is your file in here, what? Both girls replied. Shizun snatched the file from Naruto's hands and looked at it with wide eyes. It's my file, she's, Tsunade Sama's trying to get rid of me? Shizun asked with wide eyes. She looked at Tuya and Naruto, both of whom were looking at her expectantly, what? What are your skills, Shizu? Tuya asked, slightly annoyed, isn't that why you're here? 
to give us a fucking clue of what each person can do so we don't have to go through the fucking files all fucking night. Easy, Naruto warned, sticking up for his sisterly figure. Shizun smiled thankfully at him before turning back to Tuya. Well, I'm a fully licensed medic nin. I have exceptional skills in poison senbone and my taijutsu is adequate with my rank, Shizun said. Naruto held a hand up. Question. After a glare from an annoyed Tuya and a giggle from Shizun, the medic continued, I'm a Jonin, Naruto-kun. Oh, yeah, I figured as much, the blonde said as he lowered his hand. He went for another file as Shizun handed her file to Tuya. Naruto ran his hand over the file he found and immediately pulled it back. No way in hell, Naruto said, dropping Ebisu's file onto the floor, next. Aw, come on, Naruto-kun, Shizun said as she picked the file up, it's only, oh, well, I guess I can just set this one aside. Whose is it? Tuya asked, looking up from Shizun's file. Naruto smirked at her, remember that guy I told you about? He asked, the closet pervert? Oh, Tuya said with a nod before something came to her mind. You know, I've never seen the technique you've talked about. For good reason, Naruto shouted back defensively, I ain't getting hit for being a growing boy and having hormones. What technique? Shizun asked. Naruto slapped his hand over to his mouth, ignoring her as she bit and licked his bomb. And nothing, Shizun Nechan, Naruto said with an innocent grin. He and Tuya had a silent argument with glares for about 10 seconds before Naruto removed his hand and went back to looking over files. As he read this last file a smile a door in his face. I think we have a winner, here, he said giving a knowing look to Tuya before giving her the file and setting Shizun's file down on the pile. Tuya looked through the file and a grin started to adorn her face. You know, shithead, Tuya said, I think you might be right about that. Not feeling comfortable about being left out of the conversation, Shizun asked, who is it? The two teens exchanged another silent glance at each other, causing Shizun to remember the last time she had an experience like that and blushed before they grinned at her. Tell us about this man, Naruto said as he held a picture out to Shizun. The black-haired medic felt her eyes go wide and her jaw dropped at who they chose. He was the perfect choice for these two sensei. He made up the missing factor of experience these two needed and had the planning mind neither of them had when upset. She looked between the two of them and was shocked when she saw the two grinning knowingly at her. Shizun blushed before she opened her mouth and started telling them about the man they chose. You're sure that's it, Shizun Nechan? Naruto asked with a sly grin when Shizun finished. Tuya sniggered, yeah. You aren't leaving anything out of your opinion are you? Shizun said as he face heated up and turned a bright shade of pink. When the two didn't show any signs of silencing, Shizun sunk to their level, oh yeah. WL what about you two? What about us? Naruto asked while Tuya growled threateningly. Naruto lightly gave the redhead a shove before he continued, we're nothing more than friends, Shizun Nechan. You say that now, Shizun said with a grin. The two teens turned bright red at her small suggestion. That's it, out. They both shouted, standing and pulling the older woman to her feet. Shizun laughed as Tuya pulled her towards the door, Naruto pushing her out the door. After they got her outside, they slammed the door shut on her. Shizun couldn't bear it anymore and broke down in laughter. When the two opened the door and tossed the files, now bound together via ninja wire, at her, Shizun couldn't help but laugh harder. As she walked home, Shizun couldn't help but think, I just hope they treat each other right. They need it considering how they both wear emotional masks. And if Tuya so much as hurts Naruto, well, I'll just sick Tsunade-sama on her. Chapter 4, Never Gonna Be Alone by Nick Olback. Do you think you can handle them? Tsunade asked the Tokubatsu Jonin in front of her. She wasn't one to usually brag, but she was excited to stuff it in the civilian council's face when she tells them who Naruto and Tuya picked for their sensei a week ago. Of course she was slightly disappointed that they didn't take Shizun off her hands. She really thought her apprentice needed a few days away from Konoha, or at least needed to relax when it came to her drinking. Honestly, she wasn't that bad of a drunk, most of the time. Piece of cake, the Tokubitsu said with a grin, the only thing I'm concerned about is Uzumaki's, er, condition. Oh that's no big problem, Tsunade replied with a wave of her hand, he's done very well for the past few months. Hasn't he Inu? Ananbu dropped from his hiding spot and spoke in a lazy tone. Hi, Hokage-sama. Well at least you're getting back on time, Inu, she said with a small grin. You're dismissed back to your duties. At your leave, Hokage-sama, Inu said once again before vanishing in a swirl of leaves. The Takuho shook his head and put his hands in his pocket. That guy is still too tense in my opinion to be an Anbu captain again, he said with a chuckle. But, what are you gonna do? You're the boss after all. I am indeed. The Hokage said with a small smirk before she turned to her apprentice, Hear that, 
Shizun? I'm their boss, so when I say give me my sake, I mean give me back my sake. No, Shizun said from her spot sorting through the paperwork. She hadn't once faced the Takuho since he entered, instead burying herself into the paperwork that Tsunade was neglecting. Stubborn brat, Tsunade grumbled before turning back to the Takuho, what the hell are you still doing here? Go test the two Gakus already you fool. Hi, hi, Hokage-sama, the man said with a nervous laugh as he backed out of the room, at your leave. A tick on Tsunade's head was starting to appear at his calm attitude and she barked go. The door shut with a soft click but she could sense the chakra he used for his sunshine to leave the building. Tsunade rounded on her apprentice and crossed her arms under her bust with an eyeing stare. She knew Shizun could feel her questioning gaze, and she was getting even more pissed by the second that she was being ignored. Damn it Shizun. Tsunade finally snapped, what is your problem? Ever since Genma's stepped into the room, you retreated into your little corner. Not even Tantan can get to you. Shizun turned around and smiled sheepishly, I I don't know what you're talking about. Tsunade Senpai. Oh, I think you do, Tsunade said with an evil smirk, and if I had to guess, I think you had an old fling with Genma. Shizun hopped to her feet and shushed her sensei, Tsunade Senpai. Why you make it sound so filthy? So I'm right. Tsunade accused with a grin, and in an evil moment of the alcohol less state of mind she was in, she added, Oh, wait until Jiraiya gets a load of this tidbit of information. Tsunade sama, Shizun cried as her face turned all sorts of reds. Tsunade could be heard laughing from the outside of her office, frightening her secretary and other chunin assigned to the Hokage Tower. Naruto relaxed against a tree as he listened to Tuya go through her taijutsu katas. They were back at the Nidimes waterfall, and they couldn't be happier. Tuya was officially a Janan of Kanahaga Kaur, choosing to wear her hat eyed on her skull cap. To go along with her new life, Tuya has also changed her attire to wearing a fishnet t-shirt underneath the tan tank top that was held close to her figure with a black belt she used to hold her weapons pouch. She had gloves and onbu styled arm guards as well as black running shorts with black sandals and onbu shin guards. Naruto commented saying she looked pretty good when she met him at the ramen stand, and got a punch to the head from a flustered redhead. The two had deemed the Nidimes waterfall their own training ground within the first week of going there. Several other teams had other training grounds, but this one was unique to the two teens. Naruto could practice the Sutton and Fuuten techniques he was learning from several scrolls he bought without risking chakra exhaustion. Not that it would happen, and Tuya could make plenty of spare flutes whenever she got the urge to carve one. Tuya's current battle flute was almost finished, just needing a few more tweaks here and there before she could fully test it on someone. That someone was going to be Naruto. They learned that like the other three dojutsu, the Uzugan can see through genjutsu easily, mainly because it causes the user to lose their sight. Naruto had also mastered the first dojutsu technique that came with his Uzugan, the Kyufuri Ramu or Fear Realm as it is also called. He has yet to use it on any human aside from the occasional drunk civilian that assaulted him or to or the civilian councilman that he had first used it on. He snorted in amusement as he recalled the last time he had to use the Kyufuri Ramu. A poor drunk civilian who had lost first his wife in the Kyubi attack and then his brother in the auto slash Suna invasion stumbled towards them while they were at Ajirakus. The drunk poorly attempted to slit Naruto's throat with a common switchblade. A fatal mistake to anyone who was rational, but in his hazed mind it would definitely work on a blind kid. The word shinobi didn't even occur to him until Naruto elbowed him in the gut, brought the same arm straight up, delivering an enclosed fist to his nose and caused him to stumble backwards a few feet. Tuya, whose legs were about healed by now, stood and immediately came to her friend's defense with a thrust kick to the chest, effectively knocking him on his ass. While he writhed in pain on the ground, Naruto knelt over him and activated his Kyufuri Ramu from behind his head Iite. The man was screaming in fear within seconds of the technique's effect. Two Anbu had dropped down and took him to Konoha's Anbu INT office about five minutes after Naruto dropped the Genjutsu. Oh shithead! Tuya's voice snapped him from his thoughts and he turned his head towards her slightly to indicate he had hurt her. Tuya crossed her arms over her chest. You better not be using that perverted mind of yours while you daydream to think of me. Aw oh, come on, Tuya-chan. Naruto cried back slightly insulted as he rolled onto his upper back before leaping up to his feet. With a small scowl he continued, I wouldn't perv on anyone. I hate perverts, I refuse to be one. Smart boy, a calm voice drawled from the entry to the training area they were in. Naruto and Tuya snapped to their on-guard positions, each now holding a kunai in each hand. A man stepped forward and they lowered their guard as small smiles slowly crept on their faces. He was dressed in the usual Kanahaga Kurshinobi fashion except his head eye was in a reverse bandana that covered the top of his head. In his mouth was a senbo needle that looked like it was barely hanging within his mouth. He grinned at them with a small wave. Yo, he said in a calm manner. 
Naruto rolled his eyes and put his kunai away as did Tuya. So you're our new sensei, eh? The blonde asked, tilting his head slightly in an effort to get a feel for the new sensei. Yup, the Takuhu replied, share Nui Genma at your service. I'm surprised you chose me though, kid. I thought you'd want Kakashi still. Nah, Naruto said, sitting back down and resting against the tree he was lying against before. I think Kakashi Sensei would be better off on his own than having to watch me again. Genma chuckled, yeah, that's the truth. He turned to look at Tuya and nodded at her, so how are you adjusting? Last I saw you, we were fighting to the death. Tuya scowled, don't remind me. Naruto smiled and turned his head towards the redhead, relax Tuya-chan. I'm sure Genma Sensei was only teasing. Tuya turned towards the lounging blonde and raised a fist, what did you call me, you blind shrimp? Nothing, Naruto said quickly waving his hands defensively in front of him but a smile was still on his face, I certainly didn't call you Tuya-chan, Tuya-chan. That's it, Tuya shouted as she lunged at him. Naruto yelped and scrambled to his feet before dashing into the woods. Genma stood there slightly dumbfounded before he started laughing at the two teens' antics. He wiped a tear from his eye and grinned at the two teens as Tuya tackled the blind blonde's legs. She pulled the blonde into a chokehold, causing Genma to laugh even harder than the first time. Okay you two. Genma said once he regained control of himself, enough horsing around. It's time for the usual test. Is it the retarded bell test that Kakashi Sensei does to test our teamwork? Naruto asked. He was still in Tuya's choke hold, so it came out kind of raspy. Genma arched a brow. No. Genma drawled out, I'm just going to go ahead and test you both in an all out spar. It's over when I say it's over, understood? You haven't changed since the finals, Naruto muttered as he and Tuya stood opposite of him at the ready. The second he had said the word spar, Tuya released the blind blonde and helped him up. Genma smirked at Naruto's words. Begin, they didn't move. Genma arched the brow in curiosity. He was sure they would have gone to hide somewhere. Maybe everyone was exaggerating over their changes, Genma thought, they certainly seemed cocky still. I said you could begin, he repeated. The Tujanan grinned, making the Takuho slightly unnerved at the similarity between the smiles they had on their faces. We've already begun. They said simultaneously in a slightly creepy tone. Genma's eyes widened in realization and he thought, Genjutsu. He put his hands into a ram seal and calmly said, Kai. The images of the Tujanan standing at ready and grinning at him faded away, leaving him alone in the open area next to the waterfall. Genma narrowed his eyes and clenched his teeth down on his senbone as he pulled a kunai out. Turning quickly he used his kunai to deflect the two shuriken that were thrown at him aiming at a vital spot. Genma grinned. Okay, I was wrong. They're good. He thought, leaping away as a kunai with an explosion tag attached to it hit the ground, but not good enough where I need to be worried. Hey sensei. A voice called from behind him. Genma turned to see Naruto standing there with his arms in a ram seal and a small smile on his face. The Takuho arched the brow and brought his arm back to throw his kunai but stopped when Naruto spoke again. Oyoroke no jutsu, he said, vanishing in a puff of smoke. Genma's eyes widened in shock as the smoke cleared. Standing in Naruto's stead was a very nude, blushing Shizune. She slowly stepped closer to Genma and spoke softly with a slight sultry tone. Genma-kun, she said, why you don't want to hurt me, do you? Genma's mouth failed to operate as he felt blood leave his head. He couldn't look away or take notice of the kunai coming at him until the last moment. He switched out with a substitution of the closest object, said object being the Oiroke no Jutsu Naruto, and went back on guard as well as trying to clear his mind. Scratch that, they are very good. They must be bordering on low chunin level. Maybe even higher, the Takuho thought once his head was cleared, using an old flame to cloud my mind and distract me while attacking me from a hidden location. And I'll bet that was just a cage bunshine, too. Very smart. Remind me to smack you upside the head when we're done with this, Tuya growled to the blonde she was seated next to in their hidden location. Naruto pouted back at her when his clone dispersed and he got the memory of the look on Genma's face. Hey it worked didn't it? The blonde muttered, besides, we have him right where we want him. Just gotta get him a little more confident that he has this fight in the bag. Remember, this was your plan, Tuya-chan. Whatever shithead, Tuya grumbled as she pulled her flute out and readied it in her hands, I'm going to initiate part 2. Genma heard a sudden soft tune float through the air and readied his guard once again. He shook his head as his mind began to feel foggy in an effort to clear it once again. He looked around to see many of his deceased allies start bursting from the ground with their weapons still in hand. He dropped his grin and readied his kunai. Well this is bad, Genma thought as he deflected one of the attempted katana attacks thrown his way from the seemingly resurrected Konoha Shinobi. He impaled his kunai into the shoulder of one and kicked him away with a thrust kick to the chest. 
The zombie then stood back up and attacked again, this time actually making contact with its weapon, slicing across Genma's forearm. The Tokubatsu Jonin snarled and backhanded the zombie with a chakra enhanced fist before cradling his arm and checking the damage. He looked to see the zombie's images flicker and change into several skeletal beings without skin, but all wearing old samurai like armor that was a genjutsu over them. Genma realized, brushing the pain in his arm away. The fogginess in my mind and headache afterwards was an attempt at a small mind reading to use as a cover for their true attack. These must be some type of summon that Tuya has, unless Naruto's eyes allow him to control the dead, which I hope isn't the case. He deflected another skeleton samurai's attack and delivered a powerful kick to its head, knocking it clean off. The samurai comically grabbed at its head before dropping to its hands and knees and began looking for the missing appendage. The other skeleton samurai looked from their headless acquaintance back to their target before charging at once. Their katanas raised and a slightly deranged war cry emitting from them. Genma fought off the skeletons with his kunai, struggling because he was largely outnumbered. With a grunt, he shoved a skeleton on his left back before realigning his senbone into the center of his mouth and focusing chakra to his lungs, he shot the senbone at the skeleton, shattering its skull. He then used his now free left hand to knock the head of the skeleton in front of him off with a chakra enhanced punch. It was nowhere near as strong as Tsunade's punch but it would work well enough to knock a bonehead apart. Continuing his little game of knock their skulls off, Genma soon found himself free of all the skeletons present. Pulling a new senbone out and sticking it in his mouth, he said, Good try though, guys. It might have worked had that genjutsu not worn off. You might as well just try taking me head on in taijutsu instead of this long-ranged crap. From their spot in the woods, Naruto looked at Tuya with a grin. Seems like Sensei's calling us out, the blind boy said to his red-headed friend. Should we entertain him or stick to the plan and humiliate him to no end? Hey, either way he gets humiliated, Tuya replied with a small smirk, why don't you go try your new taijutsu off and I'll back you up. Remember, don't show him everything. We've gotta keep him on his toes, shithead. Naruto saluted with a gleeful grin, will do, Tuya-chan. The blonde then ran from their spot towards their sensei's position. He was excited to try his new taijutsu out. It was a blend of Jukun and Gokun, the perfect mix of the two. At first, he was tempted to try and blend the names together as well, but they just sounded stupid. It took a moment of thinking, but he eventually came to name his style Kanzenkan, or Complete Fist. The reason behind the name is it blended both the Jukan grace with the power behind the Gukan. It was also similar to an old martial art known as Tai Chi Jiao, something he had read when he was in the academy. The base of his Daijutsu's theory was this, to use an opponent's momentum against them with the graceful deflections of any Hyuga's Jukan before countering with an offense powerful enough to match even Might or Guy's Gokan. He had been practicing the technique long and hard in secret, usually leaving a clone to watch Tuya when he did so. It was mainly in the first month that he first came across this inspiration when he was thinking about what Daijutsu would be best to use against Sasuke when their paths crossed again. Naruto stopped his thoughts from wandering when he landed a few feet away from his sensei. A smile was on the Jinan's face as he noted the surprise that came across Genma's face when he landed. He whistled quietly before lifting his head slightly and looking at his new sensei with his unique sight. You called? He asked. Genma chuckled. I should have figured you would come face me, Naruto, Genma said with a grin, but that was according to my plan. You're so hot-headed that you can't ignore a challenge. Ignoring the jibe to his past self. Naruto grinned and slipped his jacket off before falling into his Kanzenkan stance. His hands were both in front of him, the right being slightly behind the left, loosely being held up by relaxed yet tense arms. His right leg was placed behind him while his left stayed directed towards his new sensei. It was very similar to Neji's Jukan stance when they faced off at the Chunin exams, the only difference being Naruto's hands were not formed into complete palms and his right leg was only resting on the ball of his foot, though it was barely noticeable. Genma arched a brow. Jukin, eh? The Tokuho said, referring to the way Naruto held himself. Genma shrugged before settling into the basic Daijutsu stance most Jonin of Konoha knew, Haiken, or Fire Fist. It had nothing to do with the element, more being named after the country it was practiced in. Genma's hands came up in fists and his legs bent slightly at the knee as he slid his left leg behind his body. The Haiken beginning stance was similar to Maui Tai, practiced in the temples of Hai no Kuni most likely where it was developed, but the similarities stopped after that. Genma shifted the senbone in his mouth to the other side before smiling and opening his palm to give Naruto a taunting wave along with saying, show me what you got. Naruto grinned, moving forward and delivering a predictable right jab towards Genma's face. As he expected, Genma expertly caught it in his left hand and threw his own right hook. Naruto countered it with his left hand, 
moving it around Genma's flying fist clockwise before smacking it away, thus leaving Genma's whole right side open for attack. The blind shinobi then delivered his own left shovel hook punch to the Takuho in the ribs. Genma's mouth opened at the sudden amount of pain he felt. The senbone was even slowly falling out of its spot from the left side of his mouth. He couldn't even try to counter, because Naruto then delivered a dual palm thrust to his chest, sending him skidding backwards. While Genma cradled his cracked, possibly broken ribs, Naruto was already rushing towards him before leaping up and twisting to the right with an attempted roundhouse kick that was blocked by Genma's right arm as he kept his ribs cradled with his left. Holy hell! Genma thought as he pushed Naruto away with his arm and started a low healing jutsu to fix the pain in his side, what the hell was that? I've never seen anyone use strength like that in a Jukan attack. It was like guy hit me with a love tap of his when we spar. Note to self, don't underestimate Naruto, damn, it still hurts like a bitch. Once he was through healing himself, Genma reset himself into his original stance, his eyes narrowed at the slightly smiling blonde across from him. This time Genma made the first move. He feigned a right punch before suddenly switching into a left straight punch. Naruto caught the fist in his left hand at an angle, as though he was redirecting it away from him. Genma didn't even blink as he turned his attack into a right hook, still aimed at the blonde's face. Naruto's left hand slapped the approaching fist aside again before he embedded his right knee into Genma's stomach. The Takuho winced and stumbled backwards. Rubbing his stomach, Genma couldn't help but smile at Naruto. Damn he's pretty good. Guess sparring with Sasuke for a year helped. Not to mention becoming friends with Hayuga Neji and Rock Lee. Wait a minute. Genma watched as Naruto resettled into his stance once again, still having a small smile on his face, before a realization hit him. Genma blanched as he swore he saw a ghostly visage of Hayuga Neji and Rock Lee standing behind Naruto, both in their own stances with their usual smile or smirk on their face. The Tokubitsu Jonin couldn't believe it. This kid, this Janan, with no real training, no sensei for the past four and a half, almost five months had successfully found a way to blend the esteemed Jukan of the Hyuga clan and the respectable Gokan of Konoha's Green Beast. If Genma ever doubted this boy's intellect before, he sure didn't do so now. It's not like it was easy to successfully blend two fighting styles, heck Hyken is still changing to this day, being modified slightly by every shinobi that uses it to match their own persona. Slowly, a stupid grin came across Genma's face as he thought to himself a single sentence. I am so fucking lucky. Genma rushed Naruto again this time twisting his waist back for a right side kick. Naruto used both his hands to block it. Holding Genma's leg in place with both hands, the blind boy then leapt off the ground to deliver a side drop kick into the stomach. Genma released a gasp before bringing his left elbow down into the back of the suspended Janan. His eyes widened when his attack went through an after image of the blonde and he could no longer feel the feet that used to be implanted in his stomach. The Takuha looked left and right for the blonde before he looked down. The ground cracked beneath his feet and Genma leaned back and away from the underground uppercut that he had seen defeat Neji in the Chunin exam finals. He delivered a right hook to the face of the blind blonde, only for him to vanish in a puff of smoke. Genma then snapped his head up as Naruto came down with a falling axe kick. Genma found himself eating dirt after that kick before he slowly stood back up. Naruto delivered a snap kick to the back of the Takuho's head only for him to dissolve in a patch of dirt. Mud clone? Naruto muttered in confusion. He focused his hearing on his surroundings and barely leapt aside in time to dodge a large fireball that was flying at the previous spot he occupied. The charred ground from the large fireball smelled horrible and Naruto had to take a moment to stop the chakra flow to his nose. It was enough time for Genma to take advantage and follow through with a surprise assault. The blonde immediately went back to his defensive tactics, blocking and redirecting Genma's attacks. Genma couldn't help but grin even larger than before. You've come a hell of a long way, kid, Genma said, did you drop that dream of yours as well? Naruto's grin was all he needed to see that he hadn't, and when Naruto caught both of Genma's fists in front of him, Genma tensed and readied for a counterattack. Imagine his surprise when Naruto pushed his arms aside and dove between the Takuho's spread legs. Genma looked up just in time to see the sandal-covered foot of his other student fly at him. The flying kick sent Genma skidding back and easily bruised his jaw. The Takuho cradled his jaw and looked back at the red-haired girl with amazement. Now Naruto, she shouted. Her flute went to her lips and a harmonic tune appeared. Genma felt his whole body freeze and watched through widened eyes as the blind blonde landed a few feet from him with his palms outstretched. Naruto then pulled his hands back as he faded from sight with a shunshine. He reappeared in front of Genma and clenched his fists as Chakra enshrouded them. The Takuho's eyes widened even further at that sight making the blonde and redhead behind him grin. Kanzankan, Kuchiku Kan. Complete fist, destroyer, 
Naruto shouted as he drove his chakra and shrouded fists into Genma's barely healed ribs. The results were as the blonde had expected, Genma's ribcage broke, but didn't drive into his lungs, Naruto had held back, and sent the experienced shinobi flying. Genma collided with a building near the training area, not forming any real damage, before falling to the ground unconscious. I think you killed him, Tuya said as she nudged the unconscious shinobi with her foot. Naruto scoffed as he pulled his jacket back on. He's alive, the blonde assured, wouldn't hurt to go turn him into the hospital, though. So what do you think? Does he pass? We're lucky to have caught him off guard with our well-placed teamwork, Tuya said as she watched the blonde pick their unconscious sensei up before shaking her head. You and your freaky strength, I swear. Naruto frowned and readjusted his hold on their sensei, slinging him over his shoulder, before replying, I'd like to think we did better than when we practiced it. At least I didn't have to use Kyufu Riramu. After dropping their sensei off at the hospital, the two Shinan went to their second favorite hangout. Their apartment complex. They'd done several miniature training exercises while in their apartment. Hide and seek, with Naruto forming several clones to make it that much more difficult for the blindfolded Tuya was one such game turn training exercise. Naruto would leave a few clones behind to watch as Tuya focused her senses throughout the apartment to locate the original and his clones that were hiding their chakra signatures. A clone would disperse once she accurately guessed the location of one of Naruto's clones, giving the clone or original the knowledge that they had been found out and thus, would return to the room Tuya was in. She could now sense chakra signatures from over a 500 feet diameter thanks to the many levels in the apartment. Currently, as they were walking, Naruto was telling Tuya of one of his pranking experiments. And then I shoved the explosive note back into my pocket and hightailed it out of there, the blonde finished. Tuya was laughing up a storm at his story and was trying her best to keep her balance. That's why there's a dent in the Shodai's forehead? Tuya managed to get out. As Naruto nodded, her laughing fit returned full force and she had to lean on the blonde for support. A few passerbys thought the two made a cute couple and smiled in their direction. Unaware of the passerby's opinions, Naruto then helped Tuya rebalance herself by placing his arm around her shoulders. A certain pale-haired blonde who was minding her family flower store watched the two with wide eyes. As soon as the two left her sight, the girl closed the store and rushed over to her newest friend, Ten Ten, as Sakura still hadn't recovered from the hospital, nor did Ino forgive her friend for acting so, well, crazy, and discuss gossip. It was little known. But Ten Ten did indeed enjoy more feminine things, she just also happened to enjoy her tomboyish ways. Who would have thought that Naruto, the goofball of the century, would first swear Sasuke's death, leave Sakura in the dust, and then hook up with a former enemy? Ino thought as she ran to Ten Ten's team's training ground. Had Ino decided to follow the two, and you all know she had considered it, she would have discovered that they both vanished in a puff of smoke. Naruto buried his face into his free arm to sneeze away the smoke that had gone up it. An adjoining sneeze alerted him that Tuya had also been affected by the sudden smoke that engulfed them. An elderly chuckle that was familiar to the blonde hit their ears. Well, well, Fukasaku's voice said with an amused tone, it seems the boy has done better than you in the female department, eh Jiraiya-chan? If he's at all like you, Jiraiya, I'll send you to Sensei myself. Tsunade's voice said from beyond the smoke, I'm so proud. Jirai's voice exclaimed with joy as he wiped an unseen tear from his eye. Naruto focused his sight on his surroundings to see he was in the Hokage's office. The smoke had cleared and Tuya was nursing her stomach, still leaning against the blonde she had been before, when Fukasaku's words reached the teens' heads. Naruto and Tuya looked in horror to see Naruto's arm still draped over Tuya's shoulders. With a combined yelp, the two teens leapt to opposite sides of the room, as far away from each other as they could have been. We are not together. Tuya roared at the smirking Sanin and amused Ode Elder. Naruto however blinked and looked at the residue of smoke then back at Fukasaku with a slack jaw to show his shock. Did, did you summon me, er, us? Naruto asked the toad. Tuya, having heard what her friend said, looked at the toad with wide eyes as he chuckled with amusement. The contract goes both ways, Naruto-chan, Fukasaku said with mirth. Surely, Jiraiya-chan informed you of when he'd be taking you on your training trip. The blinded blonde scowled and glared through his head high eyed at the nervously sweating Sanin before replying, Actually no. He didn't. Tuya-chan and I just returned from training with our new sensei. Am I supposed to just leave them behind? Realizing his words, Naruto looked over at a shocked Tuya. Her voice no louder than a whisper, she said, Why you're leaving? Tuya couldn't imagine her life in Konoha without the blonde. He was her best friend, heck. He was her only friend. Before Naruto could defend himself, Tsunade spoke up, he is leaving, Tuya. This was decided long before you two were even acquainted. As you both have just injured your sensei, 
his lung was pierced by the way. Naruto winced and Tuya sent him and I told you so glare before Tsunade continued, he'll live, but his recovery will take time. As will his own training, you two surpassed what we have witnessed or imagined you would be capable of. Jiraiya will be taking the both of you out of the village on a two and a half year long training trip. Both of us slash them? Naruto, Tuya, and Jiraiya roared in shock. The white haired man was very disappointed now. He had planned not only on training Naruto to control his bijou, but on how to be a selfless pervert like himself. These plans, however, might be sidetracked if he had to take his godson's love interest with them. However, a new thought appeared in the esteemed writer's head. To use his godson in such a way is horrible, but for his fans, he must do the immoral and spy on his godson. As the drool rolled down the Sanin's mouth at what great writing inspiration he could come up with, Tuya and Naruto felt huge weights fall off their shoulders. Naruto was afraid of leaving Tuya behind, because like her, he considered her his best friend. After the traitors, well, you know, he thought he would become obsessed with bringing him back. Then Itachi did what he did and Tsunade had appointed him Tuya's bodyguard and the rest is history. Tuya was personally afraid of being alone in the village she was once, and still slightly is because of how they had treated her friend, hostile too. She knew what the villagers were capable of, and although she was sure she could handle herself, she doubted that without Naruto to help back her up on her feet, she'd be an emotional and stressed wreck. The two then grinned at each other before looking up at Jiraiya, who was still drooling at the thought of new novel ideas, and Tsunade. Tsunade smirked before looking back at her teammate and scowling. With a well-placed chakra-infused punch to the gonads, Jiraiya was sent soaring over the Konoha horizon. Tears of pain rained over several people, making them wonder if a water technique go wrong had started a rain shower. This thought was dashed as the familiar cry of pain that followed Jiraiya echoed through the area. Tuya watched with wide eyes before looking back at a seemingly bored Naruto and saying, I take back whatever shit I have said about the hag. Naruto, Fukasaku, and Tsunade all shared a laugh at that before the two blondes began telling Tuya what to watch out for when they went on their training trip. Hearing of the pervert's favorite pastimes with his travels made Tuya boil over before a thought occurred to her. Unexpectedly, she delivered a roundhouse kick to Naruto's face making the blonde fly through the wall of Tsunade's office and land days next to the Hokage's secretary. Tuya dusted her hands off and scowled, that's for that fucking jutsu, you fucking little perverted excuse for a shithead. Are you sure, Ino? Ten Ten asked from her spot sitting on the counter of her family's weapon store. The shop was closed as soon as Ino rushed in with the news. Her father was away on a materials deal so she was in control of the shop, hence how she closed it when Ino rushed in. I'm positive. The Yamanaka said with assured voice, Naruto is dating that Tuya girl. The lucky bitch. Ten Ten arched a brow, Ino, are you jealous? A little, Ino admitted, but if you'd seen him after he stepped out of a shower. Whoa, Ten Ten said as she fell back off the counter from shock. With a quick twist, Ten Ten landed on her feet and stood with her hands supporting her on the counter, Yamanaka Ino, what have I told you about stalking boys? I wasn't stalking him, Ino said before turning sheepish, it was during the whole breaking and entering thing with forehead. He just waltzed out of the shower with a perfectly toned body for the world to see. Ten Ten reached over the counter and smacked Ino over the back of the head. Ino cried out in a yelp and glared back at the weapon's mistress. Ten Ten put her hands on her hips, what have I told you about being a fangirl? I thought you've learned from the BND. I know. Ino replied with a slightly defeated tone, but, I can't help it. He was so, so, dreamy. Ten Ten sighed and pinched the bridge of her nose in annoyance. What am I going to do with you? Ina leaned against her surrogate sister, love me the way I am and help me get a lock of Naruto's hair? Ten Ten looked down at the blonde with a slightly disturbed glance. With a voice matching her look, Ten Ten said, please tell me you were joking. Please. Ina grinned coyly and stood back on her own with her arms crossed, maybe I am, and maybe I'm not. If you'd have seen Naruto when I did, you might drop that little crush you have on your Hyuga teammate. Ten Ten turned bright red and looked away. I have no idea what you're talking about. Sure, uh-huh, Ino said with a smirk, and I'm planning on joining the youth warriors tomorrow. You know you have it bad for Niji. They were unaware of the angered pink-haired girl that was plotting against the red-haired whore that did something to destroy the easily controllable Uzumaki Naruto she once had wrapped around her finger. Sakura scowled as she listened in on the conversation between Ten Ten and Ino. Naruto would never threaten Sasuke and it was only after he started hanging out with her did he change. She was sure that's why Naruto had threatened her before. He always said she was the love of his life, all until the red-haired bitch named Tuya came into the picture. I'll show her to ruin my life. Sakura thought blindly, first she lured Sasuke away from me, then she has the gall to take my loyal manservant Izumaki Naruto from me. I'll show her. 
I'll show her why you never mess with a Haruno. The pink-haired girl resumed her sharpening of her kunai and glanced over at the image of the red-headed girl and Naruto sitting together at a Jirakus. She had been following them for the past week, watching them in order to determine Tuya's weakness. She noticed that Naruto's attire changed to one similar to that of Tsunade's, while Tuya wore clothes more similar to how many female shinobi in Konoha dressed. Slutty in Sakura's opinion. Wearing tight clothing to enhance certain curves in certain spots and attract more men that thought possible by some civilian girls. Even Ten Ten and Dino wore clothes that showed off their figure. She was sure that it was Tuya's looks that turned Naruto against her, he was a boy after all, so with no brain and all testosterone, that had to be the only logical solution. Well if I'm going to get my revenge against that whore, Sakura said to her reflection in the mirror, I might as well first turn Naruto against her once again. Time to fight fire with fire. Chapter 5 Fuck you by C. Low Green. I said I was sorry, shithead, jeez, Tuya said with an eye roll as Naruto got patched up by Shizune, wincing and yelping as the medic plucked bits of wall out of his body. The blind blonde winced as Shizune cleaned one of his cuts. This one happened to be on the small of his back, meaning he was shirtless. Tuya was so glad the blonde was blind so that he couldn't see her blush. Ow. Watch it, Nijin. That shit burns, Naruto groaned before he looked in the direction Tuya was in, and I said I forgive you. Tuya-chan. Tuya grumbled at the suffix that was added, making the other two adults present smirk in amusement. Jirai turned to Tsunade and said loudly so the two teens could hear him, Looks like you're going to be playing the priestess when they get hitched. I have a sexy nun costume you can use. Tuya and Naruto's head snapped in his direction as Tsunade kneed him in the gut and he released a yelp from the impact. A pencil suddenly flew into his thigh and he screamed in pain before looking up to see the beat red face of Naruto glaring in his direction. Not to be left out. Tuya quickly played the notes that summoned one of her doki and had it bash the perverted sage's face in with its large club via an upwards vertical swing. The three felt much better as the white-haired man groaned in pain on the ground on his back. Stupid baka, fucking perverted dumbass. Uro Senen. Shizune giggled as Naruto settled back down and she resumed plucking the debris from his back. Tuya put her flute away, her doki vanishing as she sat back down on Naruto's left. She looked at the blonde grumbling and wincing with each piece of wall that was pulled from his back. The red-headed girl felt her face heat up slightly as she looked at the whiskered blonde. Tuya wasn't sure when, why, or most importantly how she had fallen for the blonde shinobi she deemed a shithead, but she was sure that she had. It was dealing with the foreign feelings that would be the pain in the ass. The next day Tilda, take my Naruto Baka slave away from me, eh? Sakura grumbled as she pulled a tight form-fitting vest on over her stuffed bra. The deranged pink head had pulled black running shorts on underneath the pink skirt. Her idea of looking slutty. She hardly wore makeup because of the etiquette classes the academy had taught, the classes she was exceptional at because of her mother's and father's diplomacy ways. The pink hat pressed her non-existent breasts together and adjusted them through her vest in the mirror of her bedroom. We'll just see who he's attracted to when he sees me, Sakura muttered before standing and leaving her room, intent on finding her blonde slave and the whore that caused all this trouble. Ahh Chu. Naruto sneezed before rubbing under his nose earning a smack to the back of the head from his companion. Cover your damn nose, shithead, Tuya scolded, I don't want to catch a fucking cold. Ma, ma, Naruto waved her off as he rubbed the crown of his head. He rolled his neck before sighing and looking around as they walked the streets of Konoha, a wad of cash from Tsunade for their upcoming trip. Naruto looked down at his sandaled feet for a moment before snapping his fingers and grinning. Now I remember what I wanted. The blonde said as he made a sudden left into the dragon's den. A store commonly used by many shinobi. Tuya blinked in confusion before rushing after her blonde friend. Naruto walked around the shop, earning small glares from two other patrons as well as confused glances from children shopping with their parents as the new academy. His headband was secure around his eyes, allowing him to walk around with his eyes open and his uzugan letting him see as he moved. Now, where are, ah? Naruto quietly exclaimed before grabbing two blue geta shoes, looking at the price before shrugging and tucking them under his arm. He continued to walk, aware that Tuya had ventured away from him and went to look at the women's section, before stopping in front of a sword that had a slight curve to it and looked like the combination of a sai and a katana. He grabbed it and went to the counter, setting his items there, before smiling. Hi Ten Ten Chan, the blonde said to his brown-haired friend, making her smile back before she stared at the blade he had chosen. The bun-haired girl looked up at the blind blonde with slight confusion. Ah, uh, Naruto, you do know you have a sword, right? Ten Ten asked with a furrowed brow. Naruto nodded and tapped the sheath. Sheath too, the blonde said with a smile, I know what I'm getting, Ten Ten. Ten Ten shook her head and sighed before starting to ring the supplies he purchased up. 
Naruto drummed his fingers on the counter before stepping to the left as Tuya walked up onto his right, a bundle of clothes and supplies in her arms. The blind blonde snickered. Got enough? Naruto asked the redhead before getting elbowed in the side. Ow. Tei-chan, that's like the seventh time you've hit me. Stop being a shithead and I'll stop hitting you, Tuya scowled at him and smacked the back of his head when he reached out to examine her pile, her face turning a shade of red when his hand grazed one of the more private articles she picked out for herself. Don't touch my stuff. Okay, okay. Naruto whimpered as he rubbed his wrist, geez, no need to hit me about it. Shithead, Tuya muttered under her blush before looking up into the scrutinizing eyes of Ten Ten. Narrowing her own brown eyes at the weapon mistress, Tuya growled, something better be on my fucking face, or you'd better look away, bitch. Oh crap. Naruto thought as he looked at the infuriated, weapon-using girl trying to comprehend the sentence given in Tuya's anger. What was that? Ten Ten growled back, sliding the clothes Tuya picked out into a bag and leaning over the counter to stare down the Genjutsu Kunoichi, wanna run that by me again, Otohime? Girls. Naruto tried to placate the fight that was about to start in front of him. What did you say to me, weapons whore? Tuya snarled, her fists clenching in anger. You heard me, slut. The bun-haired girl growled. A small crowd was starting together. Girls. Naruto tried to intervene yet again, only to be hit with a small pencil thrown by a kid nearly two years younger than himself. The blonde glared at the kid, making the kid back away from the shinobi with a headband around his eyes before looking back and scowling at the situation. Tuya and Ten Ten kept their glares locked on each other and ignored the blind boy that was trying to keep a fight from breaking out. Tuya gritted her teeth while she pulled out her flute and Ten Ten reached for a small kunai that was kept under the counter for safekeeping. Thinking quickly, Naruto looked around before spotting a man flipping through a magazine and used his uzugan to put a small genjutsu on him. He's reading Icha Icha naked. The blonde exclaimed, earning everyone's attention and making the two upset girls cool down as a mother grabbed her nearby child, sneering at the apparent pervert, who was looking around in confusion for the guy reading Icha Icha, before leaving the store with a huff. Naruto slapped the wad of bills on the counter, pulled all of Tuya's clothes into a ceiling scroll, slung the sword over his shoulder while carrying the shoes and grabbed the confused slash cooling down redhead's arm before quickly leaving the store. See ya, Ten Ten Chan. Have a good day. Naruto called over his shoulder as he rushed Tuya back to their apartment complex before either girl could recall their anger with the other. Ten Ten dumbly stared at them before scowling as she recalled Tuya's words to her. This I S N T over, redhead, Ten Ten shouted just as Naruto made it out the door. Count on IT, Sam Horai, Tuya shouted back while looking over her shoulder to the door. Naruto sighed and diverted his destination to their training ground. Tuya needed to release some steam, and if the blind blonde had anything to say about it, it wasn't going to be on him. Where could they be? Sakura growled as she stormed through Konoha, making several people blink in confusion as the scantily dressed Kunoichi walked past them. Some looked to their fellow villager for answers, earning various, and inaccurate, hypothesizes. The pink-haired Kunoichi barely resisted the urge to shriek in fury and call their names out. An idea suddenly occurred to her, though. It was a stretch and risky idea, but an idea nonetheless. With her new plan in mind, Sakura went towards Team Guy's training field, intent on talking to a certain bun-haired girl who would possibly, and most likely, be accompanied by a platinum blonde. Sakura wasn't sure why Ino had been ignoring and avoiding her, but she was sure that she hadn't done anything wrong. Sakura least expected to walk past a training ground where a familiar and vulgar exclamation earned her attention. Curious, the pink hat dressed like a five-dime hooker went towards the nearest training ground, and her eyes widened at what she saw, and heard. Motherfucking bitch. That goddamn, faggot fucking sword masturbating nympho. Tuya snarled as she furiously punched at a tree with her bare fists. Naruto leaned against a tree that had large slashes in the bark, a rather large sword attached to his back as well as new shoes on his feet. Unseen by Sakura, as well as not noticing her, his face was slightly red from the words, and their usage, that Tuya was throwing around casually in her anger. He wondered if her anger was his own fault or because she hadn't expected Ten Ten to snap at her. The Rookie Nine had been avoiding them ever since their confrontation, but shortly afterwards the members of the SRS had come to reintroduce themselves. Naruto smirked as he recalled Shikamaru's unnatural eye twitch at his teammates' assumption of the non-existent relationship between the lazy Naruchunin and Tamari. He also recalled her bold assumption of Kiba's interspecies tendencies, due to his poor attempt at flirting with her, exclaiming, You're sick. You and your whole clan are a bunch of dog fuckers. The beating Kiba got after trying to defend his clan's name was enjoying to watch, but Naruto stepped in and stopped Tuya as soon as she got to enjoy herself, knowing her rage towards the SRS had dimmed, 
but rekindled when they had met again at the ramen stand. Neji and Choji wanted nothing to do with Tuya's anger, so they merely apologized. Rather than tear them up like she had Kiba or break them like she had Shikamaru, the poor Chunin has been seen twitching a lot lately whenever Suna came up in a conversation. Tuya simply snorted and proclaimed her dislike of the two they had killed. Naruto frowned as he recalled her recent night terrors that had started after she spoke of her dead teammates. Maybe you didn't like them, Dei-chan, the blonde thought as he listened to his new teammate pound on the poor oak spark, but I think you were afraid of them, not their strengths or appearances, but them in general. If only you'd open up, then maybe I could help you. Oi, shithead. Tuya's peeved cry earned the blonde's attention and he snapped his fingers once to regain his sight. What he saw made him whistle in shock. Tuya's knuckles were slightly scraped and her hands showed slight bruising, but it wasn't the redhead's hands that made him whistle, rather the tree's outcome. The poor sapling had been carved a new hole that day, and from the dents on the fresh wood being revealed, Naruto was sure that a small rainstorm could knock it down if the winds were strong enough. Looking back at his teammate, Naruto pushed off his tree and smiled slightly as he walked towards her. Feel better, Dei-chan? The blonde said before nursing a smack. Ow. Damn it, I thought we had a deal. Now, I feel better, Tuya said, shaking her left hand slightly and looking away, mentally berating herself for feeling so nervous when he smiled at her like that. She knew why his small smiles, laughs, or occasional stupidity gave her butterflies in her stomach, but at the same time, she wished that it didn't happen at all, that he would only be her teammate and not a boy she liked. Not even the knowledge that he was a couple of years younger than him or that he was a Jin Chiriki dimmed the earning for his company Tuya felt when she was in bed at night. The thought of the blonde just laying with her in bed made her heartbeat increase as the blood rushed to her face. Naruto furrowed his brows in confusion as he heard her heartbeat increase, and not due to the adrenaline either. Before he could ask about it, the blonde and redhead looked over at the shrieking intruder. You stay away from Naruto. Sakura shrieked as she stormed onto the training ground. Naruto had to do his best not to gape at the ridiculous way his former teammate and crush looked and he nearly joined Tuya in with her snickering. The pink hat looked unbalanced in her ridiculously high kunoichi heels, and there was a visual of something small and paper-like hanging over the top of her shirt where a large lump seemed to be. S. Sakura? He managed to ask, thankfully keeping a confused look on his face and not bursting into laughter like his new teammate. Tuya, when necessary, could keep herself in check, but seeing some pink-haired girl storm over to them, dressed like a slut, a cheap one. The redhead couldn't help but laugh. Sakura tried to send a sultry smile Naruto's way, but all it did was make him nervous as she made a strange face in his direction. It wasn't one of those angry slash embarrassed smiles she gave before she beat him for something he did wrong, and the blonde felt it was so unnatural. He contemplated placing a genjutsu on Shino's face to make him smile sometime, just to get rid of the visual before him. Naruto-kun, Sakura purred further freaking the blonde out as he not so subtly pinched his own back to wake himself from the nightmare or genjutsu he was in. Why don't you and I go to Ichirakus and we can have a date? Now that snapped Tuya from her laughing fit. Naruto's confusion grew when the beautiful laughs that came from his normally enraged teammate stopped and her heart slowed. The blonde blinked before nearly jumping out of his skin when Sakura clung to his arm, pulling it in between her non-existent breasts. Come on. She whined, please. Sakura, are you okay? Naruto cautiously asked, his normal rage when being near his dim ex-teammate dropping as he became further and further creeped out. I'm fine, Naruto-kun. Naruto noted that she seemed to be forcing the suffix on his name as well as the smile she was giving him. Her teeth were grinding slightly, or was it Tuya's? That realization made Naruto glance back at his current teammate. Tuya's mouth was shut and her posture screamed don't give a fuck about what's going on, but her hands were clenching tightly into fists and the grinding coming from her mouth was getting louder as well as a soft growl that came from her throat. The blonde blinked in confusion when a soft voice suddenly whispered, I'm not wearing any panties, Naruto-kun. That statement made the blonde jump away from Sakura, his new blade out and in a reversed hold as he glared coldly at the pinkette. Sakura blinked in confusion before scowling at looking at Tuya. Whatever genjutsu you put on him, take it off. The Janan Banshee screeched to the irritated redhead, there's no way Naruto is not being held in a genjutsu. He wouldn't betray Sasuke-kun like this hypnotized Baka is and he would never hurt me. What did you do to him? Tuya's posture dropped into that of a fighting style and before Sakura saw it coming, a fist was in her stomach and the air left her mouth. Naruto cursed under his breath before sheathing his blade and walking towards them. I didn't do shit to him. Tuya snarled as Sakura fell to the ground in a coughing fit. I would never put shithead in a genjutsu. L liar. Sakura shrieked as soon as she regained some breath. 
Naruto shook his head and placed a hand on Tuya's shoulder when the redhead's face contorted in a scowl and she went for her flute. It's not worth it, Tuya-chan, Naruto said as he started to lead the redhead away from the still coughing pinkhead. Sakura is and always will be a loyal member of the Sasuke's kissing club, like the rest of her family is. Sakura scowled and slowly got to her feet, unnoticed by the two leaving the training ground. Her eyes were narrowed in anger and in her last-ditch effort, Sakura pulled a kunai from her back pouch, rushing towards Tuya. Infuriated that the redhead had forced her bitch to betray her and her Sasuke-kun, Sakura leapt up with a yell and brought the kunai over her head. Die you fucking bitch! The pink hat shrieked, making the two look over their shoulders. Acting quickly, Naruto shoved Tuya away from him, putting him in Sakura's way as he did so. The redhead stumbled before growling and then freezing when a squelching noise hit her ears. Sakura blinked before smiling and sneering at Tuya before yanking her kunai out of Naruto's shoulder socket. Naruto yelped in pain and fell to the ground on his back, his right hand going to cover the deep wound between his arm and chest. The blonde groaned when he put pressure on it, and he nearly passed out when he used his vision to look at the damage. Succumbing to the dark reality that he had to put pressure on the wound and keep from passing out while also keeping his vision from acting up, Naruto dropped his head back with a thud. Your genjutsu's broken now. Sakura, in her crazed state, exclaimed, Time to die, slut. Tuya didn't hear the girl's words. All she saw was Naruto on the ground, cringing in pain, and then the bloody kunai in the slutty dressed pink haired whore's hand. Now seeing red, Tuya quickly pulled her flute out. Quietly and without any emotion aside from loathing in her voice, the redhead spoke. Last mistake, bitch, Tuya snarled out before bringing her flute to her lips. She played a tune that made Naruto gasp as soon as it hit his ears. For a moment, he considered calling out and making her stop playing, but as soon as he considered doing that, he dashed the thought away. He smirked slightly before hissing in pain as he pressed more pressure onto his wound. I'd stop her, but you brought this on yourself, Sakura, maybe you'll learn after Tuya introduces you to her favorite Doki. Naruto thought as he started to slip into unconsciousness. W what the, what is, what is that? Sakura whimpered out, her courage all but gone upon seeing Tuya's summon. It was nearly nine feet tall and had dark orange skin. The weapon in its hand could be described as a large bone while the skull on its head, covering its face was canine-esque. It had a torn black cloth around its waist, giving it some decency, but the soulless eyes glaring down at the pink hit was what made her stop. Not the sheer muscle that appeared on its body, but the pure, unrestricted hate in those eyes. You summoned me to kill this bitch? It asked. Tuya lowered the flute from her mouth, her eyes still narrowed in anger at Sakura. I don't want her dead, Tuya growled, I want her to pay. Break her bones, rape her fucking titless ass, shave that ass whore's hair but don't kill her Andy Dehanta. Make sure she's still alive. The beast, Andy Dehanta, nodded and hoisted the large bone onto his shoulder. He took one step in Sakura's direction, and the pink hat screamed in fear. A small trickling could be heard shortly after her scream ceased and she fell back, her eyes rolled into her head and her face stuck in a position of fear. Tuya sighed and pulled the flute from her mouth as soon as Sakura hit the ground. She sneered in the pink hat's direction before walking over her to Naruto's side putting a hand on the wound and making him groan. Dumbass, the redhead scolded, I could have blocked it. What can I say? Naruto asked with a sheepish smile before pouting as she helped him up, I kinda wanted you to summon the real deal, not use the Andy Dehanta no Yumi. As if I'd make Andy Dehanta deal with that whore, to you spat, glaring down at the unconscious pink hit once again before looking at Naruto. She pushed his hand down and pulled his jacket aside, her eyes examining the cut. It was slowly healing already but there was that small chance of infection. Come on, shithead, Tuya said with a scowl as she dragged him with her, unintentionally grabbing his bad arm. Naruto yelped, earning a soft apology from the redhead, before he followed her as she dragged him to the Hokage's office. Like the new shoes, Gaki. Jiraiya praised as Naruto walked into the office with Jiraiya, a large bruise already on his face from whatever he had done to piss of Tsunade. The blonde arched a brow and looked at said cage, earning a shake of the head. It's not worth repeating. Tsunade growled before blinking as she took in the red spot on Naruto's shoulder. With a groan, the god Aim stood from her desk and forcibly sat the blonde in a chair while she placed a green chakra-coated hand over his wound. Ow! Naruto yelped as the wound was cleaned and sealed. He mumbled to himself as he rolled his shoulder when Tsunade was done before looking up at her expectant eyes. With newfound anger, Naruto crossed his arms over his chest and grumbled, one word, Haruno. Oh, Kami. Tsunade groaned rubbing her head before snapping her fingers. Two Anbu landed at attention on her left and Tsunade pointed at them, Haruno Sakura is to be arrested and placed in a holding cell. 
I want her chakra sealed off as soon as she's located. That girl is too much like me, and like me, she'd probably try and fight her way to freedom. Hi, Hokage-sama. The two Anbu said before vanishing in a blur. Tsunade rubbed her head before looking at the two teens waiting somewhat expectantly in front of her. With a sigh, Tsunade went to her desk and pulled out two files. One was labeled Uzumaki Naruto and the other was Tuya, no surname. Tsunade opened both files and pulled two duplicates of a mission paper out. At the top of both, she wrote training trip. Under superior she put Jiraiya Baka, making said Sanin pout profoundly as he watched her write. At status, she put the words, in progress and wrote the current date at the mission started section. With the pain done and over with, she grabbed her Hokage seal and pressed down onto the papers before shoving them in the file. There, it's done, Tsunade said before sitting back in her seat and looking at the two grinning teens before her. She blinked as she saw a red-headed girl with a swirl on her headband stand in Tuya's place while a tall blonde with a white cloak stood in Naruto's. After taking a moment to rub her eyes, Tsunade opened them again to see the two grinning teens, making her smile slightly in realization. Looks like Sensei was right, Tsunade thought, history does repeat itself. So when do we leave, Bakan? Naruto asked. Tsunade had to resist throwing a stapler at the blonde before looking at Jiraiya. It's up to him, the busty cage said when she looked back at the two. But personally, I think you should leave ASAP. The sooner you do, the sooner you come back, and then I don't have to worry about this idiot doing anything stupid while he's away. Oh come on, Suhaim. Jiraiya whined, that's not fair. Taichan will keep us in line, Tsunade Bakken. Naruto assured his Hokage with a grin, only to be smacked upside the head by the blushing redhead on his right. You dumbass. Don't call me that. Tuya growled out. Naruto cradled his head in pain and pouted Tuya's way. That wasn't nice. Chan, beating on your blind teammate. The blonde whimpered. Oh shut up, shithead. The redhead growled before the two of them left the Hokage's office. As soon as they were gone, Tsunade sealed the room and looked at Jiraiya with intense seriousness in her eyes. You swear to take care of them? On your career? She asked her teammate. The white-haired Sanin grinned before nodding, I absolutely swear that they'll be perfectly safe. I'll be sure to teach the boy the semen killing jutsu and that he uses condoms just in CAAs. Tsunade embedded her fist in the white haired man's stomach, not putting any chakra behind it to be sure he wouldn't leave the room so she could ask the real question. As Jiraiya knelt on the ground, holding his stomach, Tsunade spun her chair to look at him. You know damn well what I meant, you old pervert. The busty cage spat before her tone died and she looked out the window. Tuya and Naruto were walking towards their apartment to pack for the night. Naruto smiling and rubbing the back of his head while Tuya cussed him out. The pigtailed blonde frowned at the recollection of why Naruto had to leave before looking at Jiraiya as he stood. The old Gama Senin had a serious look on his face and he crossed his arms before looking out the window, his eyes locking on the blonde Janan with a headband around his head and over his sightless eyes. Jiraiya smiled slightly before it dropped and he spoke. The Akatsuki is dangerous, full of S-class shinobi that are legendary far beyond your eye. Naruto won't be taken by them and I'll personally make sure of it. You have my word as a sonin, Tsunade. I won't let anything happen to the Gaki. His face took on a perverted smile and he continued with, unless he gets laid, then I'll be sure to capture it for all of my fans. Moments later, a shooting star was seen in the dimming light of a Kanahagakura day. Had anyone been paying attention, they would have seen a white-haired man defy the laws of gravity and pause in mid-air over the hot springs, write something in his notebook, before resuming his journey across the skies. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.